Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Super Saturday Morning, your source for vintage cartoons, commercials, and anime with a brand new broadcast premiering live every Saturday morning at 7.45 a.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Okay, so as you know, I usually BS for a minute or two before I talk about the lineup, but the first thing I want to address in this monologue is the lineup for this week. If you saw the lineup in the introduction or in the video description below, then you know why I'm excited to announce the lineup today. And if you didn't read the lineup yet, then you're about to find out why I'm excited to share it today with you right now. Seriously, this is probably the strongest lineup of shows in the very short history of Super Saturday Morning, but some would say it's the strongest lineup on YouTube right now. If the YouTube cartoon scene was a pro wrestling promotion, then these cartoons are Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ric Flair, The Undertaker, Bret Hart, The Rock, Sting, Shawn Michaels, you get the idea. Some of these cartoons I was 100% positive I could not show on YouTube at all, but then I went and verified that this is totally not the case. I'm going to name four very beloved cartoons. Some would say these are the big four when it comes to nostalgia cartoons, the Mount Rushmore of 80s cartoons. I could think of only two other cartoons I would rival this Mount Rushmore with, but... If you think you can guess which two I'm talking about at the end of this, then let me know in the comments section below. But enough of all the foreshadowing. Today's broadcast consists of Josie and the Pussycats, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, Ulysses 31, Inhumanoids. This is episode 12. There's one more episode left. Next week is the series finale. Dungeons and Dragons and here comes the big four, the Mount Rushmore of 80s cartoons. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters. Wow. There's your big four right there. Next up, we have Toxic Crusaders, Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Yep, we're still riding those coattails. Captain and the Game Master, Legend of Zelda, Legend of Arslan. The Heroic Legend of Arslan, I should say. And that is also a series finale today. Blood Rain, Curse of the Yoma, Part 2 of 2. Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge, Part 3 of 4. And last but not least, we have the main event, Berserk. Just naming all of those cartoons on that lineup brings me so much joy. I know you're going to love today's episode. And if today's lineup isn't proof that SSM loves you, then I don't know what is. So how about showing some love in return? If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you are waiting until I earned your subscription, then surely I must have done that today. Plus, if you get me to 50 subscriptions, you will get a bonus episode. So I ask as a personal favor to please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you always know when Super Saturday Morning is about to drop a video, and leave a like on the video by clicking that thumbs up icon. If you've already subscribed to the channel, you can always hit the like button to help me every time. And if you've done all this and you have to hear me ask you every week, please know that you have done enough and I thank you very much for your support. Now, I promised a review of the Super Mario Brothers movie and you're going to get it. Long story short, I absolutely loved it. It was perfect in every way. The animation was sleek, stylish to the Mario universe, and very colorful. The voice acting was on point. The story was exactly what it should have been, a simple and basic yet very entertaining story written by a Japanese guy about an Italian plumber going through a war pipe and as a result traveling to the Mushroom Kingdom where he has to save his brother, the Princess Toadstool, and the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser and his army of Koopas. The only real criticism I saw beforehand was that the princess was a girl boss in the movie. As, you know, in the video game, she is usually a damsel in distress. And I can see where they are coming from, but they do it in a way that it makes sense as she has lived in the Mushroom Kingdom all of her life. Don't worry, though. Mario is the hero in this movie, just like he is in the video game. So that criticism should not hold up at all. Throughout the movie, you see a bunch of characters and scenes from all sorts of Mario games. And you even see Easter eggs from other Nintendo intellectual properties as well. If you're a Super Saturday Morning fit guy, you'll notice that they left an Easter egg for us as well as they reference the Super Mario Brothers Super Show 
that has been airing here the last few weeks. Also, you'll hear a familiar voice in the show, um, from the show in this movie uh, for a small role. I read today that this Super Mario Brothers movie not only did well in the box office, but it shattered Disney's record for the biggest animated movie opening as it made a whopping $377 to $400 million. The final numbers aren't out yet, but that's what it's looking like. Um, that's only within a few days. This movie should easily make it uh, the $1 billion mark. I wouldn't be surprised if it does $1.5 billion when all is said and done. Disney needs to step their game up because the studio that put this Mario movie out, Universal Illumination, has already been beating them in the numbers for the last three years. Disney had a lot of trouble dealing with the minions from Despicable Me and some other titles like uh, Sing and uh, whatever the name of that pet movie is. But now look what just happened. The success of this Mario movie doesn't just mean more big Mario movie sequels that will also break records. But now you have the birth of the Nintendo Cinematic Universe. That means you're also going to see The Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Metroid, Star Fox, Punch-Out, Fire Emblem, Kirby, and more on the big screen as well. I haven't heard this from an official source, but that is the common sense result of Mario's success. What were the last two animated Disney movies that came out? What, Strange Worlds? Horrible. That Buzz Lightyear movie? I personally have not seen it, but I have not heard one person say it's any good. Literally every person that I heard speak about this film did not like it. Both movies were considered huge flops. Disney has been resting on their laurels for a very long time. A lot longer than they should have, to be honest. And now they just got overthrown. Long live the new king. Now, I know what this sounds like, and I'm not saying Disney is going broke and they're getting evicted from Florida and California. Disney is still raking in the cash, but that's because of the parks. So they still have that advantage, but that could possibly be in jeopardy as well because Universal's building their parks up with a new edition of Super Mario Land or World, whatever. Point is, there is a Nintendo-themed spot at Universal Studios in California and soon-to-be Florida, so Universal is looking to eat Disney's lunch in every category. Even if you're the big, biggest Disney fan out there, this is great news because you know Disney is having an emergency meeting right now as we speak since they just got embarrassed. Some other big company swooped in and outdid them at what they used to do best, family entertainment. If they are doing what they are supposed to be doing, then they are planning on how they are going to answer back. Either way, no matter which one of these two comes out on top, we the consumers are the true winners because competition creates the drive to entertain us more. So sit back, relax, remember to never give either of these two big corporations your loyalty because your hard-earned money should be earned by them and the difficulty you had to go through to get it. And let's enjoy what they create for us as a result of this big shakeup in the animation industry. Do you agree with anything I just said? Do you disagree? Which Nintendo video game titles are you looking forward to being adapted into a movie? Let me know down below in the comments section. Alright, it's time for me to shut up now. Get your breakfast, get your mind right, and enjoy the 15th broadcast of Super Saturday Morning. Mr. Cow. Yes? How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I don't know. I always end up biting. Ask Mr. Fox, for he's much cleverer than I. Mr. Fox, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Why don't you ask Mr. Turtle, for he's been around a lot longer than I. Me? <laughs> I bite. Mr. Turtle. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl, for he is the wisest of us all. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? A good question. Let's find out. One, two, three, three. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a smart owl. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. The world looks mighty good to me Cause Tootsie Rolls are all I see Whatever it is I think I see Becomes a Tootsie Roll to me Tootsie Roll power wants your chocolate chew Tootsie Roll I think I'm in Whatever it is I think I see Becomes a Tootsie Roll to me
is the one we want. Yes, the girl on the right, known as Valerie. See, the pussycats are world famous. Sure, and flat broke. Here, Josie, take my chair. Thanks, Alan, but it looks like Alexandra beat me to it. <laughs> Who is the leader? I am. I am. <clears throat> I am. Would you be willing to play for royalty? After playing for peanuts, playing for royalty would be groovy. Excellent. The royal jet is waiting at the airport for you. I still like working for peanuts. Especially salted ones. <laughs> plan is working perfectly. Did 
you say? So, okay, half safe. Take another look. Unsafe and trapped. Easy, guys. Just don't lose your cool. How can I keep my cool when they'll probably boil us in oil? Welcome, oh great musicians from afar. See, chicken brother, no boiling in oil. We are safe. I am the royal advisor, and this is our chief minister. We need your help. The princess Mewilla, heir to the throne, has been abducted by a mysterious figure known as the Evil Eye and his band of hooded desert nomads. Hey, is a desert band like a rock band? Never mind her. Please continue, sir. The Evil Eye has glowing red eyes which can cause anyone to come under his power. And we fear he intends to put the princess under his power so he can rule our country. Well, what's that got to do with us? I thought you wanted the Pussycats to play a gig. Just one Pussycat to play the part of the princess, you. You want me to pretend I'm the princess? Yes, you are almost twins and perfect for my plan. What plan? To confuse the evil eye by having her pose as the real princess until she's found. Will you do it? Sure, if it'll help the princess. Well, how do I look? Just like a royal princess, Val. Yeah, you sure could fool me. It doesn't take much to fool you, Josie. Step forth, slaves. Yes, master. At the palace, a girl poses as the princess. Bring her to me. Yes, master. You are now my 
slave? Yes, oh great mustard. Master, not mustard. Yes, mustard. <laughs> I'll get the ketchup. Hmm. What do we do? The tracks just disappear into that goofy sand pile. Simple. Just start digging and see where the truck went. Cool it, Alexandra. There's probably an electronic device or electric eye controlling a secret entrance. Maybe it's hidden in this tree, Alan. Good thinking, Josie. I'll help you find it. Don't waste your time, Alan, dear. I think it's in this tree. Oh, dates! I'll bet the secret entrance opens up by saying something corny. Like, uh, open sesame! <laughs> what do you know? It worked! A secret elevator under the sand! I'm a genius! Well, get going, boy genius. We're right behind you. Who, me? <laughs> uh, can't we talk this over? No! Going down. It's your meddling friends, Josie and the Pussycats. Yes, Mustard. My favorite TV show. <laughs> no! Dispose of them! Yes, Mustard. No, dumb slave! This way! And it's Master! Yes, <laughs> Mustard. Now, out through the door! No, no! Open it first! Yes, Mustard! Trap. This way, please. No pushing, no crowding. Hey, what's with you, Melody? Great Mustard commands me. She's in a trance. Come on. I know how to snap her out of it. I saw it in a movie. I saw the same movie, twice. I'll do it. There, that'll knock her out of it. Who's there? <laughs> Nothing's there. Wait here a minute. Got any more ideas? Yeah, cold water will do the trick. Oh! <laughs> That's a good trick. Let's see you do it again. <laughs> sure. I'll snap her out of it. Is it morning? Hey, you did it. She's back to normal. Right, but the evil eye doesn't know it. And that gives me an idea for a plan. Obedient slave. You have disposed of the intruders. Poof! 100% disposed, mustard, old mustard. <laughs> you have done well. He's gone. It worked. Now we can look for Valerie and the princess without worrying about that creep. I am sorry you had to get involved in this, Valerie. That's all right, princess. We'll get out of this mess yet. But, but how? Like in the movies. Some brave and daring heroes will ride out of the night and rescue us. You can't do this to me. I feel silly. This dancing girl plan was your idea, Alex. Remember, these were your exact words. I quote, <clears throat> The dancing girls will go into the dungeon, and at the right time, Alan and Josie will create a distracting noise. When the guards go in to investigate, Sebastian will untie the princess and Val. And we substitute the balloon-filled dummies in their place. Then all we have to do is dance our way out to safety. Unquote. Did I say that? Oh, boy. I gotta learn to keep my big mouth shut. Great Mustard has brought you some entertainment for your viewing pleasure, fellow slave. Dancer looks like Alexander. Is that one of the daring heroes you spoke of? No, that's a chicken. Ow! My foot! Here, Claude, I'll do this dance alone. Sorry. Whoops. What's with you, Dingaling? Huh? Let's 
going on here? Look, master. Oh, oh, it's the evil eye. Shh. If they keep cool, maybe we can still pull it off. Get ready, Sebastian. That is the worst dancing and the ugliest girl I have ever seen. Ugly? She just happens to be my brother. And all us Cabots are beautiful. Your brother? Uh, she means her sister. <laughs> Imposter! Seize them! Oh, Sebastian, hurry, untie us! Bring that imposter down! Yes, Master! Oh, no! Oh, no! No! Boy, I thought I looked silly. <laughs> Yeah, 
her one gal, one cat act is gonna be a one night stand, cause that's all I can stand. Oh boy. Melbourne of Sydney, Lemon. The American makes the first move, but the Aussie counters. They're both getting their licks in. Wait, Melbourne is down to his safety stick. But no, it seems Melvin chewed his charms, Big Pop, and that violates international law. That means we have a new champion. And remember, world, charms, Big Pops are made to last because there's more flavor in them. What's your favorite food? Yeah. Well, Albert's still writing. Hey, turkeys. Listen, man. We hear you dudes think you're pretty tough. So we're gonna challenge you to the Buck Buck Championship of the world. You must be kidding, man. We've never lost. Yeah, we can beat everybody. We'll find out. Be at the lot, Saturday at noon. We'll be there, man. Hey, Russell, find Albert and tell him to meet us in the junkyard for our way in well, listen, while the guys are getting ready for their weigh-in, I'd like to explain to those of you who don't know just how to play the game of Buck Buck. See, first you need a pole. Now you need some kids. Now the first kid to make the horse comes in, grabs the pole, puts his head to the side, and he ducks it down, and he holds on to the pole like this. Now the second kid behind him puts his arms around his waist like this, ducks his head down. Now, you got to keep your head down because when you make this horse, see, some other kids are going to come and jump on top of you, and they just keep coming and jumping and jumping and jumping until you can't hold the weight anymore. Now, suppose you keep your head up like this. Somebody lands on you and mashes your head down in your chest, and you look like a turtle. <laughs> I mean, we had the champion Buck Buck team of the world. When we played Buck Buck, there was nobody that whipped us anywhere in the world. And you can tell kids who play a lot of Buck Buck because, you see, their bodies are built like this. From here to here, that's regular. But their legs are only this long because they've been crushed so many times. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Here comes Fat Albert. I guess the weigh-in is about to start. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Okay, Bill, it's your turn. <laughs> Beautiful, man. You're right on your playing weight. Everybody's in perfect shape so far. Okay, Albert, you're up. Hey, hey, hey! Out of my way! <laughs> Uh-oh, we're in trouble. According to the scale, you're really underweight, Albert. Yeah, man. Are you on a diet or something? No, I just quit snacking between snacks. All I know, man, is that without you, we don't stand a chance with those guys. I'm calling an emergency meeting right now. The meeting will now come to order, and I don't want no messing around while I'm talking. Now we'll have our secretary read the minutes of our last meeting. <clears throat> our last meeting lasted 33 minutes. Okay, okay. Now let's get down to business. As you know, our club has been challenged for the Buck Buck Championship of the World. And with Fat Albert underweight, there's a good chance we'll lose. We're gonna have to fatten him up before Saturday. Hey, that's my banana. Sorry, Russell. But this is no time for you to think of your stomach. We gotta start thinking of Albert's stomach. Chow down, Albert. As of now, you're in training. Well, if you're kind of training, I don't like. There's plenty more where that came from, Albert. Hey, man, that's my lunch. Relax, relax. Every pound Albert gains is a pound in our favor on Saturday. I'll eat to that. Hey, all that eating's making me hungry. How about some refreshments? Good idea. How much we got in the treasury, Donald? Now, let's see. We got 73 cents. Four bubblegum cards, five bottle caps, and two wads of bubblegum. <laughs> Meeting adjourned while we go get some refreshments. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh. I am got a hungry. I want a purple sucker. And I want a licorice. Rock candy for me, man. I got this on a jawbreaker. Cool it, cool it. Our anchor man gets first pick. Our anchor man? Yeah, Fat Albert. <laughs> right. Who else weighs as much as an anchor? Go ahead, Albert. Uh, Take your pick. I think I'll have a peppermint stick. No, no. Some lemon drop. No. Wait, Mary. Some jelly beans. No. Licorice. With... Wow, I can't decide. Molasses squares. No. Oh. Come on, Albert. Get it together, man. I know. I'll have one of everything. Hey, what about us? Yeah, I'm starving. Where's your team spirit? Unless we get Albert up to his playing weight, we all lose on Saturday. Hey, bit. It's bit starving to rain. Yeah, let's split. Wait a second. What kind of friends are you? You gonna just take off and let Albert get all wet? What if he catches cold? He's our most valuable player. I am? Yeah, I guess I am. Use that box for our umbrella, Albert. And let's split. Hey, how am I supposed to eat holding the box at the same time? That's right. Give him a hand, you guys. Come on, Albert. Move it, man. We're all getting wet. You want me to eat and run? My stomach will cramp. Too bad your lips don't cramp up. Hey, my feet are getting wet. Hey, our feet's getting wet, guys. Maybe he'd like us to carry him home, too. That's the spirit, Bill. Man, this team really has morale. No, man. I was just... <laughs> hey, Rudy. I'm in thinking. How did you find time to fit it in? It's all that eating, Albert. That's what I've been thinking, about eating. <laughs> If I'm going to perform at my peak tomorrow, i got to have a good pre-game breakfast, man. So? My mom goes to work early, and we don't eat breakfast, so I figure if all you guys could sneak your breakfasts out of the house tomorrow, i eat them. Good idea? Huh? Man, why should we give you our breakfast? Because I'm the most valuable eater. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>
cook my favorite breakfast today, grits, bacon, and hot cornbread, covered with peanut butter and syrup. And I gotta give it away? Listen, Harold, why don't we eat half of everything and give old Fat Albert the other half? <laughs> Nobody will know the difference. Nobody except our stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Love cornbread. <laughs> okay, turkeys, line up. We got a secret weapon, but we're gonna keep it hidden until we need him. He's close. Ready? Bug bug number one, coming. Bug bug number two, coming up. Ow! Hey, these guys got rocks in their pockets. If you think it looks rocky for our kids now, just wait till you see what's ahead. <laughs> Don't look now, gang, but the battle isn't over yet. Buck, buck number 12 coming up. <laughs> Hang on, Harold. Don't give up now, man. Don't talk to me. Talk to my leg. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. You held 12 of us. Of course, we usually hold 40 or 50 ourselves. <laughs> all right, let's line up. OK, let's go. We haven't got all day. Then get ready, turkeys, because here comes the baddest, meanest, toughest, hungriest <laughs> dude you ever saw. <laughs> Hey, what was that? A mosquito? <laughs> you guys don't have no weight. Oh, yeah. Buck, buck number two, come in. Go get him, Bill! It's me, Come on, Bill, move it. A piece of paper. Somebody threw a piece of paper on top of me. All I gotta say is I'm glad we've got Fat Albert. Come on, Rudy. Hey, when you guys jump on, be sure to tell us, because we can't even feel you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got, we got one more man, and I guarantee you'll feel him. And you guys are in trouble, because he's the baddest bug bug breaker in the world, man. Come on out, Fat Albert. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey! You can have it, go! Hey, 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 what's going on? Uh, I, I come to ground shaking. That's Fat Albert coming to get you. Hey, hey! I don't feel too good. Come on, Albert. Yeah, hey, come on, Albert. Hang in there. Go, Albert. Yeah, hang in there, Albert. Where to go? Hey, Albert. Where you going? Home. I ate too much, man. We win, we win. We're the Bug Bug champions of the world. Man, I can't just believe we lost. Nobody ever beaten us at Bug Bug before. Yeah, and I bet we could have gone to the Olympics. We would have, if Fat Albert hadn't a chicken out at the last minute. I always thought Albert was really cool, but he turned out to be a big turkey. So I make a motion that we kick Fat Albert out of our club. I second the motion. I thought it was an emotion. That goes for me, too. Right on, yeah. Hold up a minute. We're all known Fat Albert a long time, man. He's our friend. Some friend hogging all the food and making us carry him around on our backs. Yeah. Albert used to be cool, but lately he's been throwing his weight around. Yeah, I guess you're right. OK, it's unanimous. <laughs> Fat Albert's out of the club. I got, I got some, some bad, bad news, news fellas. Albert. Huh? What's your bad news, Albert? I'm gonna be moving away. The truck's coming tomorrow to take all our furniture. What's your bad news? We've kicked you out of the club, Albert. <laughs> Them low down. Carol rustlers are getting away, Buck. And we'll head them off at the pass. Come on, Harold. It's my turn to be Buck. No, man, you're Dale. And you're supposed to be riding side saddle. Okay, 
I'll be Dale, but I ain't riding side saddle. <laughs> Cowboys just ain't funny without Albert, man. Yeah, he played a great herd of cattle. I kind of miss old Albert, man. Me too, man. We had lots of fun together. What's the matter with you guys? You have amnesia or something? It was Albert who let us down when it counted yesterday. Yeah, but it was your idea to stuff them all full of food, not his. Yeah, well, um... We owe Albert an apology, man, I'm telling you. Me too, man. Come on, let's, let's go find him. Hey. Ma'am? If you're looking for your friend Albert, he's gone. Gone? A big truck carted all their stuff away about an hour ago. Well, we'll never see Fat Albert again. Things just won't be the same without Albert around. Yeah, we sure did have some good old times together. Like that time when, when we all built our own scooters, remember? Right. And Fat Albert kept his secret and wouldn't let us see it. Hey, Albert, come on, man, we're going swimming. Hold it, I'm almost done. And now, announcing the fastest, most coolest scooter in the whole world, the Fight Albert Special. Hey, hey, come hey, on, man. man. Really cool. cool. That's That's cool. cool. Right. 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 Hop on, you dudes. I'll drive you down to the river in style. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Come on, Albert, slow down, man. Relax. This baby will stop on a dime. Yeah, well, I hope the dime has a lot of glue on it, man. <laughs> oh, I better put on the emergency brake. Fire, fire. My shoe's on fire. Somebody get some water. Don't, don't sweat it, Albert. Hey, in about two seconds, you're going to have all the water you need. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't look. I can't swim. Hey, look at this. We're floating. Yeah, floating. Right into that big ship. Let's get out of here. This ain't working. We need a motorboat. Yeah, that gives me an idea. Never again will I knock you for spouting off at the mouth, Albert. No, no doubt about it. Albert was really cool. Yeah, he was a real friend. If only we knew where he moved to, we could write him and apologize for putting him out of the club. Now he'll go through life thinking we're mad at him. Bad. And I'm sure I'm gonna miss Fat Albert. I think we're all gonna miss him, man. A whole bunch. Hey, man, we can't just sit here all day. Let's go do something. Cowboys is out. Without a herd of cattle to wrestle, it just ain't no fun. <laughs> hey, it's Fat Albert. No, it's not. It's a herd of stampeding cattle. <laughs> Slap leather, boys. We got the vermouth after them critters. Prado. What you doing about here, Fat Albert? We thought you had moved. I did. Just around the block. What do you know? We're all still riding the same range. <laughs> you know, friends. Friends. It's it's a funny thing about friends. I mean, they can kid each other, and they can call each other names. They can even fight each other. And when they split up, one of them moves away. They really miss each other. And when you think you're gonna lose a friend like Fat Albert, now there's a whole lot of friend you're gonna miss. But I think that this song can say it a lot better than I.
into? Uh-huh. It's got a square bathtub. A square bathtub? Why? So I can't leave a ring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> lollipops and they like bubble gum so i buy charms blow pops they're two treats in one a delicious charms lollipop with soft bubble gum inside and i depend on charms for quality real good kids what'll it be lollipop or bubble gum oh you've got it blow pops a great tasting lollipop with soft chewy bubble gum inside <laughs> i buy them by the pop i buy them by the bag it is the 31st century. Ulysses killed the giant Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. But the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods. I sentence you to travel among unknown stars. Until you find the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stones.
Stand by. Onboard instruments detect electromagnetic turbulence. Analysis, Sherka? Unusual activity present. Ultra-high electromagnetic force of vectorial intensity beyond recognized norms. I suggest extreme vigilance. Duty stations. Attach safety belt. Anti-magnetic protection shield now in operation. on. Electromagnetic turbulence fading away. No damage to report. Guidance systems intact. We made it! That was one super colossal, giant, gigantic whopper of a space cyclone. Telemachus, how can you sleep through a bumpity bump like that? This is a miracle. What happened? Nestor, explain, please. <laughs> Nestor, what? What is it? <laughs> Telemachus, Yumi, follow me. Answer me, Nestor. Nestor. Does it make any sense to you, Nono? No, it's as clear as mud at the bottom of a well. <laughs> no. 
Numenor, my brother. Tell me what happened. Wait, it isn't. No, it's not him. This is not my brother. I sense another what? will. Something just happened that I can't explain. It's just as if... What was that strange force that has brought our companions back to life? The gods. By all the constellations, of course, the gods are behind all this. Numenor! By the blood ties that unite us, come! Yes, yes, that's right. Come! Yes, you are going to succeed, Numenor. Struggle. Struggle against the will that's invaded you. That's it, yes. Yumi. Oh, Ulysses. Oh, Yumi. What happened to me? Yumi. At last, my true brother. Watch yourself. <gasps> Wake up. Oh. Yumi, do something fast! Ulysses, what am I doing with this sword? Numenor, I think it's the gods who are manipulating you. The gods? Yes, you're right, Ulysses. It's the gods. Yes, there's still a voice in my head ordering me. They want us to set a course for the reefs of space. They want to destroy you at all costs. The reefs of space? Can you explain that, Numenor? I can't, Ulysses. I can't. I don't understand it. The ship seems to be held in an electromagnetic field. We're being irresistibly driven forward. By the spiral nebulous tridents. They're escorting us to forces toward the reefs of space. Tridents? But why? But our companions. Look, Father. Our comrades have taken over the ship's controls. Shirka! Shirka! All Shirka's circuits have been cut. Telemachus, look at Yumi. Telemachus, I've got Yumi. My brother! Hurry, Yumi, hurry! Yumi, help me! We have to regain control of the Odyssey without hurting our friends. Yes, Father. Hey, Telemachus, where's Yumi? She's not here anymore. She's gone. Father. All right, go find her quickly. I'll handle the robots. Right. The gods is too strong, too strong. Save yourself before it's too late. Leave me, please. No, I can't, I can't, I won't, dear brother. Yumi, go, please go. Brother, brother. Blasting, blast out. Are 
Are you crazy? What are you trying to do? But it can't be. I can't believe it. Numenor is my brother. He can't. We have to take over the ship's control center. It is essential. Our companions must be made to leave their posts. What will you do, Father? I have no choice. We'll have to use explosives. Father! It's a great risk, I know. It'll be dangerous, Telemachus, but really, I have no choice. Don't you see? Do whatever you have to do. No, no, and I will take care of them. We'll show them who is the cleverest. Go ahead. Here they come. Quick! I can't go on. You go without me. I'll never do that. Have courage. We haven't lost yet. Now or never if we want to get the control center back. This is our chance. But we are only three against all of them. We can't win. Yumi, everything depends on you now. Are you strong enough to use your power one more time? I want your brother to try and get the others to come out. Yes, I understand, but I'm not sure I can manage to do it. Yumi. 
My sister, you are calling me. Ah! Circuits now functioning. I am now operational. Automatic alert system programmed. The Odyssey is completely surrounded. Ulysses, can you hear me? Shirka? I did it, Father. I'm in control of the ship. Good work, Telemachus. Well done. Oh, Father, quick! We're approaching the reefs of space! Ulysses, here is a rundown of the situation. You can take advantage of a dead angle of 30 degrees relative to baseline on your transcopic screen. Affirmative. Field increasing. I am unable to change ship's course away from the reefs. Electromagnetic field has just disappeared. All control systems functioning normally.
Father, we made it! Yippee! I'm proud of you, my son. <laughs> you really managed it all. All the same, it's nice to be back as one of the family snug as a bag of Yumi, we owe you a great deal. Telemachus told me what you did. Without you and your brother, we would probably have crashed on those space reefs. Don't give up hope, Yumi. Numenor will get well soon. I promise, you'll see. Your brother will come back. I know. Real soon. I so want that. equipment to have a battle with. When you get G.I. Joe and the authentic G.I. Joe equipment, you'll have the greatest realism, the greatest fun you ever had in playing soldier. Box after box of authentic uniforms and equipment so you can change your G.I. Joe soldier into a camouflage marine ready for battle, a Navy frogman with complete scuba suit and inflatable life raft, an Air Force pilot with high altitude helmet and air vest, Get G.I. Joe and get G.I. Joe equipment so you can set up exciting battle action whenever you want. Remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Where's the ring? Here's the ring. Ring pop. You can wear a ring around your finger. Ring pop. I love the way your ring looks. I love the way my ring tastes. Ring pop. Mm -hmm. It's a juicy tuna flavor. Ring pop. Will you wear my ring? Ring pop. Stop this evil before it's too late. Hector Ramirez here for 20 questions. When last seen, the Statue of Liberty was being carried deep into the earth by the monstrous inhumanoid, Metlar. Metlar, turn down the heat. Say, why don't we ever go anywhere? You never take me any place nice. This place is a dump. Tired of you hanging around with those losers, tendril and decompose. Today, the Masterson team will head deep into the earth in these small dirigibles. 
and you'll see it all live right here on 20 Questions. Now let's meet the brave members of the Masterson team. Good to see you again, Senator Masterson. It's good to be here, Hector, and just let me say how proud I am to be an American. Here we have Hollywood's top leading man, Dusty Aykroyd. As soon as we bring Lady Liberty back, I'm gonna turn my true feelings and emotions into a heartfelt artistic statement called Hot Liberty. I, uh, I can't wait. Uh, and there's no mistaking the former heavyweight champ of the world, Smokin' Joe Abdullah. Miller, I want you. I'm gonna take the fight right at you. Three rounds. I'm gonna knock you out. Three rounds. And here we have the famed film director, George Landisberg. I, I, I think we have a tender love story here, Hector, and I, I really want to explore its inner meaning. I'm sure you will, George. Last but not least is the famous explorer and treasure hunter, Jean-Pierre Croissant. We, oui, Hector, we will be able to view the fabulous Lady Liberty as no man has ever seen her before. And there you have it, the Masterson team. What a bunch of panty-wasted, quiche-eating, moist-eyed whips. And when you clowns get yourselves in trouble, don't expect me to come bail you out. Oh, cool out, Auger. I am cool. Right. Hey, just remember that this is supposed to be a happy occasion. Come on, it's time. And try not to be a jerk. This is Rhonda Bartlett with all the gossip that is worth repeating. Today, movie actress Stella Blaze and Earth Course scientist Dr. Derek Bright will be tying the knot. This is Barbara Gown, your roving fashion eye. Stella is a blaze of glory in her gown by Raul of Ecuador. And if there are any among us who know of a reason why this man and woman should not be wed, let him speak now or forever. Consider yourselves man and wife. I, I don't remember too much. Just take it easy, buddy. We're listening. We were flying over Ankar Wat when suddenly this thing came from nowhere. There was a, a bright flash. What do you think the lightning spitter was, Herc? I don't know. But I think I know who will. The granite scouts wave to us as we pass on our way deeper into the earth. We can feel the tension mounting as we make our way through the earth's crust. How much more of this can any of us take? Only time will tell. I'm looking for you, Midlar. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. My fellow granites. Uh, no, no, that's not right. Uh, do granites vote? Uh, uh, granites of the world, the Masterson team salutes you. <laughs> the courage of the Masterson team is astonishing, and you're seeing it live on 20 Questions. What was that? Uh, this is Hector Ramirez signing off. As we pass deeper into the crust, we feel a vague uneasiness as though we were being watched.
Noise. We, we should have a meaningful dialogue. Yeah. We should be allies. Yes, yes, a, an alliance. <laughs> that's that's a good idea, yeah. I'm glad you see things our way. As an ally, my enemies are your enemies, correct? Well, uh, uh, yes, yes. And our enemies are Metla, Nightcrawler, and Masterson. Do you understand what that means? Oh, yes, I understand. I'd say we've reached a mutually beneficial agreement. And just to show you that I'm right behind you, I'll tell you where Senator Masterson is. Very well. I will spare you and your leader. <laughs> Short, Redland. We need information about a big snake-like thing that spits fire. They must be talking about Slither. That is not a name to be spoken lightly. What can you tell us about him? <sighs> it is an old story. Slither is an ancient horror who once ruled humans and inhumanoids alike. Metlar was but a slave to Slither. The monuments he built to his master, you know as the pyramids. But ancient Egypt was not the only place where Slither had his slave Metlar build monuments to him. Ancient Chinese monuments to Slither later became known as Chinese dragons. Still, Metlar endured his slavery. But it was in the jungles of what is now called Asia, Slither had Metlar build his favorite temple. Finally, Metlar rebelled and trapped Slither in a thin layer of unbreakable lava rock. Metlar then placed the helpless Slither within his jungle temple, where the monster has remained for thousands of years. Legend says that only a certain melody played on a certain wooden flute could free Slither. Somehow, Blackthorn has done this. Well... We got our work cut out for us. The excitement is really building as we anticipate catching our first glimpse of the Statue of Liberty. As we pass over the molten lake, we can feel the heat of the ancient fires. We're under attack, but who's attacking and why? We'll try to answer these and other questions, I hope. All right, come on out where I can see you, you lily living cowards. Come on, Miller, you and me, one on one. What do you say, what do you say? The attackers seem to be Metlar's statue warriors, but the question remains, why and what will happen next? Metlar's statue warriors are defeating your enemies, Blackthorn. Does that satisfy you? Rescue the humans and deliver them to me. It looks like this reporter will be signing off permanently. 
Look! Where are you taking me? I am a United States Senator! It's a dramatic turn of events! The Masterson team is being rescued! The question now is, why? And who are these strange creatures who... Hey, turn that camera this way! Ah, and here we have a statement by none other than Senator Masterson himself. Senator? I'd like to express my thanks to Blackthorn Shore for the heroism he has displayed in rescuing my team. Yes, it's certainly dramatic how the Masterson team was brought back from the brink of destruction. Wait a moment. I think we're about to have a statement from Blackthorn Shore. And why can't you get decent help? They couldn't even beat those ridiculous, ugly creatures. Are you listening to me? I heard every word. I was just trying to finish your hot tub, dearest. Excuses. All the time, excuses. Turn that up. Let it be known that I am holding the Masterson team hostage until I exact my revenge against Nightcrawler, Metlar, and Earthcore. It's 20 questions. We'll continue to bring you all the late breaking developments. I want him destroyed! But our leader there says we have to finish this right away. What leader? One of these days... Wait, listen to me! Hold your fire. You've got ten seconds, Nightcrawler! Make it profound! We must join forces to stop Blackthorn! Why should we trust you? It's in our mutual interest! That's not good enough! I know where Blackthorn and Slither are! It just got better. I say give it a try. It's the Grenets! Why are they attacking us? Don't shoot! We're all the allies. Look, uh, I don't know. Everyone's got to make sacrifices. Humans, Granites, everybody. And I'm afraid I must exchange you for Granik. I, I know you'll understand. Get them! <laughs> But, but General Granitary, I've only been acting for the, the common good. The common good of Granahill? Take him away! General Granitary, are we glad to see you? Granahill is a traitor! The Granites are your allies against the Inhumanoids! Thanks, Granitary. We have a little job to do, and we can use a few of your best fighters. They're yours. But what about him? He knows where Slither and the Masterson team are. He's on our side, at least for the moment. You call this a hot tub? <laughs> for surface creatures, maybe, but not for me. You can't even do one simple thing right. Why do I put up with you? I ask a few small things. You bungle them. No wonder you can't defeat your enemies. Don't just walk away when I talk to you. If you leave now, don't come back. I'll come back, all right, after I find somebody to pound on, like Slither! Surprise is the only thing going for us. That depends on who surprised us or Slither. Nice cheery thought, Auger. I think Nightcrawler's ready. I still don't trust him. Just watch your back. Let's go.
couldn't count on that slime pit. Hey, he saved your neck. Yeah, well, I still don't have to like him. Well, this didn't work out quite the way I planned. Yeah, Slither was waiting for us. Surrender, sub-creatures. I knew you would come for the hostages, you fools. We have Granite, we have the Masterson team, and now we have Earthcore! And now you have Metlar! Die, Blackthorn! So, Metlar, you've come back to me. Yes, but never again as your slave! <laughs> Better get Krennic and the Masterson team out now while the getting's good. And miss this fight? Why don't you referee it? <laughs> Think I'll catch it on the news at 11. Time we meet Slither will be the last. Slither! They're escaping! They're all escaping! My enemies! You're supposed to destroy my enemies! You have too many enemies! Slither! Wait! We're allies! Come along peacefully, Blackthorn. Unless you'd rather hang around down here with your buddy. Let's go home, folks. Slither won't bother us now. At least, not for a while. And so, several questions remain unanswered. No, no, cut the camera. How are we going to explain this to the folks at home? You're the reporter. You think of something. Yeah, well, you're the politician. Cover-ups are your specialty. I can't wait to see what these bozos put on their show tonight. You're not watching it on my TV. I'm sure glad to see you guys. Uh, have you heard from Bright? No, he's still on his honeymoon. Hey, turn it up. This is Hector Ramirez with 20 Questions magazine. The Masterson team has returned from deep within the Earth. It's been quite an adventure, wouldn't you say, Senator? Uh, yes, Hector. It uh, was an adventure, unfortunately. The uh, Statue of Liberty... Uh... Uh, uh, one moment. As you were about to say, Senator, Lady Liberty is home tonight. For a live report, we go to New York Harbor. Yes, Hector, Lady Liberty is home. <laughs> She's back where she belongs. It took raw courage and determination to pull it off. I definitely say we pulled it off, Senator. There's nothing like the work of a team. The Masterson team. Those weak knee lily-livered fakes! Good going, Augur. <laughs> At least the next time we see Slither and Metlar, we won't have the Masterson team along.
strong as they come. I've seen him take on a hundred cobras and set them on the run. Meet Sergeant Slaughter and his Triple T tank. Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter is now a part of G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. A real American hero. Lift the adventure of G.I. Joe. And hey, look out, Cobra. Sergeant Slaughter comes with Triple T tank. Cobra figures and equipment sold separately. Joe! Think you're me, Cobra? Wait till you meet Slaughter's Marauders. Slaughter's Marauders camouflage, they can't be seen. But you better believe they're me, they're me. There's me, and Spirit, and Footloose on the attack. Slaughter's Marauders to the rescue. Hey, this. Go, go. go. Nobody beats G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, Slaughter's Marauders. Equalizer, Armadillo, and Lynx figures sold separately. Nobody beats G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe. I really need you guys to understand something, especially if you weren't an 80s, 90s kid like I was. I was blown away. My mind was completely blown at the fact that Sergeant Slaughter was not only a pro wrestler in the WWF. Well, now it's called the WWE, but I digress. But he was also a G.I. Joe. I was like, what? How does he do it? How does he turn himself into a cartoon and fight Cobra? And how is he going to turn himself back into a real person? And then main event, WrestleMania 7. And yes, I was completely divided because I was a huge Hulk Hogan fan. But Sergeant Slaughter was a G.I. Joe. So that main event for WrestleMania 7 was pretty crazy for me. Um, I wasn't able to see all of the um, episodes of, um, you know, superstars and whatnot to understand the... Um, storyline between Hulk Hogan and um, Sergeant Slaughter and the fact that he was, I think, with Iran at the time. You know, that was his little gimmick where he betrayed America. So I didn't really get all of that. But yeah, Sergeant Slaughter. Wow. Hey, look! A Dungeons and Dragons ride! Wow, neat! Give me a break. Ranger? Barbarian? Magician? Thief? Cavalier? And Acrobat? Who was that? That was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Snap it up, will you, Presto? If I get any wetter, I'll grow gills. Okay, here goes. Alaka, watch this. Let's give it a try. Please give me something to help keep us dry. Hey, I, I did it. Give me that. <laughs> yeah! Sorry, Eric. My hat doesn't work that well when it's wet. Or any other time. Oh! Dungeon Master! Hey, how long has it rained in this world anyhow? Last time it rained for three years. Three uh. years? Oh, great. You don't happen to have a boat on you, do you? No, but I have located a ship which is capable of taking you home. A ship? Where? The answer lies with the lost children. I thought we were the lost children. Tell us more about this ship, Dungeon Master. Yeah, Dungeon Master! Ah, uh, he's gone. Come on, we better get going. I wonder where the lost children and the ship are. Ugh. This is great. Now we're looking for a bunch of crybabies and a yacht club. I think we took a wrong turn somewhere. So what else is new? That. Yeah! We're under attack! Get him! Get him! Get who? We don't see anyone. Well, they can't hit what they can't see. I'm getting out of here. Yeah! Hey, it's just a kid. We're being attacked by kids. In that case, we're gonna pick on someone their own size. Yeah! Ew, it's a girl! I don't fight girls! This should flush them out. Here. Yeah, you're gonna hurt someone. 
Forget it. They probably can't even talk. Maybe they'll understand sign language. Why did you attack us? Judging by your strange weapons, we assumed you worked for Venger. You, you speak perfect English. Thank you. Wait, maybe these are the Lost Children Dungeon Master told us about. Okay, Lost Children, now you're found. Where's your ship? Take us to your yacht club. We are the Lost Children, but we have no ship. What? Wait till I get my hands on Dungeon Master. Hank, these kids don't know anything about a ship. Our ship has been taken by Venger. See? Huh? Venger? Venger? What are you kids doing out here alone anyway? Yeah, where are your parents? Our elders are all gone, except for one. His name is Alfor. Where was he? He's being held prisoner in Venger's castle. He was captured when our ship was wrecked. I don't get it. Why would Venger want a boat? Who cares? I don't like the sound of this. Yeah, well, whether you like it or not, Eric, we'd better find a place to camp. It'll be getting dark soon. Excellent. Soon the repairs will be completed, and your work will be done now for. Your ship shall make me more powerful than ever. Well, what is it? The lost children have been spotted in the forest nearby, with Dungeon Master's young ones. Good. Now we can eliminate them all. No! What? If you harm those children, I will work no more. Is that so? Your threats mean little to me, Venger. As you wish. Shadow Demon, see that they are captured and bring them to me. But... Go, and do not harm them. Say, uh, whatever your name is, you got any salt? So, Gore. No, not sugar. Salt. Salt. Sheesh, sugar. These guys aren't as smart as we thought. Who puts sugar on potatoes? I'm afraid it is you who do not understand. Sogar is his name. Oh, right. And I'm Thumper, that's Bambi, and this is Dumbo. Can it, Eric? Be nice. Hey, you guys, the fire's going out. I will get some firewood. Can I go too, Sheila? Come on, I'm old enough. OK. But be careful. How old are you, Bobby? Almost 10. Gosh, and you're allowed to go out on your own? I wasn't allowed to go out on my own until I was 55. 55? How old are you now? Oh. 74. <gasps> ah. Boy, are you gullible, Bobby. 74, what a joke. So, Gore, he's not 74. He's only 73 and a half. Huh? huh? But that's impossible. No, it's not. Look at him. They're children. Huh. We are children. Alfar is our only elder. Well, how old is he? 552. That's middle age for our people. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Wow, that sounds great. Are you kidding? They probably go to school for 360 years. Okay, guys, listen. We'd better get some sleep. We've got a big date tomorrow with Venger. We are nearing Venger's castle. I wonder why there are no guards around here. Because nobody is stupid enough to ever try to come here, that's why. Hey, look! No. No. <gasps> oh, no! Come on, let's try to get closer. What? I say we forget this whole deal. We're not even sure where Alfor is, even if we could get inside the castle, and we can't. Well, maybe not all of us. But one of us could. Huh? Especially if she were invisible. Good 
good idea, Sheila. Now remember, Sheila, all you have to do is find out where Alfor and the ship are, then get out of there. By the time you get back, we'll be ready to move. You mean if she gets back? Shut up, Baron! Well, here goes everything. Hey, lizard lips! What you call me? Me say nothing. Shut up and keep lookout. She made it. I think she was in trouble when she left. In truth, there's a 97% chance that something unexpected has happened to your friend. Oh, brother. Ovino is right. Dungeon Master! In fact, you are all in great danger. No kidding. However, through defeat, you shall find victory. What's that supposed to mean? It means the warranty has run out on Dungeon Master's brain. I think the time has run out on our safety. Look! <laughs> supposed to do? Magic? Maybe that's it. Presto, try something. Okay, well, here goes. Uh, Cloaks of weapons dropped to the ground. Uh, put Vengeance Troopers in the lost and found. Grab him. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Dungeon Master's other young ones cannot be far behind. Soon, Shadow Demon, we shall have the ship and the magic weapons. Yes, Master. Boy, I still don't understand how my hat made those guys disappear. Who cares? We're gonna get creamed anyway. <coughs> cover your face, Eric. And while you're at it, cover your mouth, too. Eric's right. This is pretty risky. Provided we don't make any foolish mistakes, I'd say our odds of succeeding are precisely good. Odds, schmods. The only thing odd around here is the way these clothes fit. Eric, shut up and pay attention. Drulomak, call for. Okay, come on. Come on, what? Shh. Drulomak, um, call for. Way to go! We did it! Oh. Huh. 
I can do this stuff. Come on. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm I'm supposed to take these prisoners to the dungeon. So so is that the new dungeon or the old dungeon? Oh, brother. <laughs> that way, cell three. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the help. C catch you later. You are cool, Eric. Real cool. Hey, quit complaining. I got us the directions, didn't I? <laughs> I know. The young ones are in the castle. This will be easier than I expected. Yes, Master. Here it is! Cell 3! Hang on, Sheila. We'll have you out in a minute. <laughs> it's us, Sheila. Come on out. <laughs> You're not Sheila! <laughs> Dungeon Master Spies. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. Boy, I must be better than I thought. Hurry, there'll be more guards in a minute. Sheila, are you all right? Sure I am, Bobby. This is no time for sentimentality. Let's get out for and get out of here. Out for? Out for? Yeah. I'll have you out in a second. Ah! A monster! Oh, no, he must have eaten Al Four. Quick, help me close the door. He hasn't eaten anyone. He's a vegetarian. We're all vegetarians. We? Huh? He's one of you. You're one of him? Oh, um, Al? You guys grow up to be Wookiees? Al Four. Have you been a good boy, little Sogor? You guys grow into monsters? I, I mean, things like that? Brother! There's little time. We must retrieve our ship and depart for home. Took the words right out of my mouth. How will the rest of you get through the castle without being spotted? I think we can handle it. Right, guys? Right! Three to a cape should do it. Three people in each one of these? Oh, no. Phew. What do you see, Bobby? <laughs> Back of Uni's head! Which way to the ship, Alfor? Through that corridor and to the right. Ow! Get your elbow out of my ear! <gasps> it's over there. Wow, a spaceship! I wonder why there are no guards. Why? Because nobody ever gets in here, either. That's why. I didn't know they had spaceships in this world. We're not from this world. Our ship crashed here. Huh? huh. I wouldn't fly in that thing if Venger was standing right next to me. Seize them! <laughs> Fly until I complete the repair of the motivator device. So repair, repair! Eric, Doc! Ah! What are you, nuts? Oh, uh, thanks. Fools, you will never escape. Oh! Ah! Kula, the Krell wrench. How long will this take, Elfor? Not longer than we have, I hope. Magic Cat, I'm gonna be frank. What we need now is a 20-ton tank. Whoa! <gasps> Presto, this is no time to open a toy store. Sorry. Now, don't do anything you'll regret, fellas. I'm warning you. <gasps> you'll be sorry if you come any closer. She gone. Where'd she go? So long. 
She go bye bye now. Oh no! Look! There's too many of them! Quick! Everyone into the spaceship! Master's young ones again, Shadow Demon. But, Master, what of their weapons? No doubt. Destroyed as well. Are you guys okay? <laughs> I'm okay, Alcor. Hey, where are Presto and Eric? Over here. That was one crummy landing. wasn't too hot either, Eric. I guess we'll never get back to our world. Or ours either. Nonsense. I think I can fix it. Where is your world anyway? The planet Axon, far off through the northern sky. Huh? <laughs> Gee. Yeah, great neighborhood. So how long before you'll have this jalopy up and flying again, Pop? Oh, not long. Say, 15 years. That soon? That soon? I think we'd better switch to another airline. Eric, good luck with your ship, Alfor. And your journey home. Thank you all for your help. You're welcome. Come on, guys. We've still got to find a way home. So long. Here we go again. Fun for everyone, sold separately from Amtoy. He's a terrifying enemy of G.I. Joe. Destro is his name. Destro is his name. G.I. Joe, an American hero. Fighting evil Destro. Introducing Destro. You better watch out, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Destro's stealing our tank. We gotta stop him. We didn't get you, Destro. You've met your match, Joe. Destro is here. G.I. Joe Battle Tank comes with figure, other figures, and Destro sold separately from Hasbro. Yo, Joe! He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe is there. It's G.I. Joe against Cobra the enemy, fighting to save the day. He never gives up, he's always there. Fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Okay. Joe! Joe is the code name for 
America's daring, highly trained special mission force. Its purpose, to defend human freedom against COBRA, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. He never gives up, he'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe. Serpentine, Flint. So far, the launch looks W.O.C. W.O.C.? Without Cobra. I think I'm picking up enemy readings. Uh-oh, battle alert. We got snakes in the dirt. Quite a bird, they mopped. Yes, Tomax. Now let's take Birdie home to Cobra. <laughs> Magnificent, superb. GI Joe is completely disoriented. This space shuttle will be mine. Fine! Wrong again, Chrome Cheeks! We've been expecting you, Alpine Bazooka! It's time for a little reptile removal! Surprise! Puddle! Oh! Hey, I never laid a glove on you! I feel what my brother feels! Terrific! Pass this on! Pitch in, guys. This is one woman who hates to break a launch date. We're with you, Lady J. Let's get Gable! They must not free the shuttle! Cobra! Attack Destro! Destroy the G.I. Joe Marauders before they breach the canopy! Gung-ho, make Bumper Face entirely unwelcome. Yo, Joe! Sharks, go! Cease shuttle attack. Take evasive action at once! Keep your laser cooking, Bazook! We're almost there! Now! Wow! Now! G.I. Joe was ready for us! How dare they anticipate my strategy! <laughs> retreat! 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 Wait for me! I'm your leader! Keep kicking Snake! We've got him on the run! Watch me change them from cobras to water rats! No! Glad you, you could, could join, join us! us. Oh, no! Stop 
stop surrendering and listen to me! Stand back! My troopers may be cowardly, but I'll never yield! Suffer and sushi? What were those? <laughs> I don't know. But we didn't come this far to lose the Cobra Biggies to underwater weirdos. Shipwreck, you and Snake Eyes lead a detachment into the river and find Cobra Commander and the Crimson Twins. First, they want me to fly. Now, they want me to dive. The minute they ask me to dance, I'm getting out of this outfit. Pastor Sailor, put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> Flint, it looks like Destro's playing Skyscraper Hide and Seek. We can't let him shake us. That nickel noggin bozos all the Cobra brass we've got. <laughs> this is one bozo who won't be got at all. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Whoa! That humongous H2O bot got shipwrecked. Dive, Snake Eyes! Dive if you want to stay alive! Destro to, to join, join us. Did you hear that, Destro? We're expecting you. I've only been waiting for your invitation, my dear Cobra Commander. I shall now terminate this little game of fox and hounds by completely outfoxing my pursuers. <laughs> I'll go after 
after him from the east. I'll go in from the west and we'll squeeze him in the middle. Coming at you, Lady J. Ditto from the flip side, Flint. We've got Destro. Where did he go? Well done, noble Destro. I applaud your performance. <laughs> Enterprise City swallowed him up. Yeah, and then the city's due for some indigestion. Let's get back to headquarters. My scheme was even more brilliant than usual. The attack on the space shuttle was merely a diversion to mask our true purpose, the secret planting of a special cargo. Replay the tape. There, this part. Joe forces were so involved with the firefight that they never felt the addition of my special cargo pod. Magnificent! <laughs> and how will the unique and charming cargo inside the pod be activated, Cobra Commander? Why, by Zartan, of course. Zartan? But how will he get aboard the space shuttle? He is already aboard. Booster separation complete. Next stop, G.I. Joe Space Station Delta. Felt like we hit something, but there's nothing to hit up here, is there? The retro rockets kicked in to maintain our course. We must be carrying extra weight. I'll check out the cargo bay. You're out of trim. That's better. Uh, unauthorized cargo's making this pelican hard to park. Sorry. Unauthorized cargo? Scarlet here, Mutt. I want you to locate and identify that cargo. Affirmative, Big Red. I think Junkyard just zeroed in on it. When docking's complete, blow off the hatch. Too much. My first assignment on Delta, and I've got command responsibilities. <laughs> Good work, Junkyard. Looks like somebody managed to clip a cargo pod onto the overhead rack. Reads harmless. Let's get it out of here and make sure. Red Knox, prepare for action. <laughs> Ready and waiting, Sergeant Popper, sir. <laughs> in there. Come on out. Oh, how adorable. Oh, they're so cute. Watch with Junkyard, Mud. These little honeys are harmless. Yeah, Junkyard doesn't make mistakes, Breaker. Hey, there's a card in here. These adorable creatures are called fatal fluffies. I'm sure you will enjoy their deadly secret. Sincerely yours, the Cobra Commander. The Cobra Commander? What is he? Fatal fluffies? What the heck is going on here? What does he mean, deadly secret? What he means is... This! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe.
this doesn't look like is good. We're at some kind of airlock between the river and the inside of this structure. I'll have to swim for it, Snake Eyes. Bath time, Polly. I'm a pig, not a duck. Keep squawking and you'll be a gone goose. What is this place? A subway tunnel below Enterprise City's regular subway system. Let's reconnoiter, Snake Eyes. Try not to attract attention. Sure, who'd notice a wet sailor with a parrot and a silent masked man with a timber wolf? I think we're in major trouble. Funny looking commuters on this line. I think we ought to see what they're up to. And here come our rail passes now. <laughs> ah, nice day, huh? Or a nice night. Who cares down here, right? Am I right? <laughs> you see, nobody wants to know a subway philosopher. Now try to relax and act natural. Second thought, just enjoy the ride. This hasn't been our finest hour. Cobra Commander, the Crimson Twins, and Destro slipped through our fingers. Shipwreck and Snake Eyes are missing. And now we can't make contact with the shuttle or space station. It's Joe Code Delta. <laughs> Responding to my transmission, it has enabled me to lock firing coordinates on your headquarters. Farewell, Flanders. <laughs> is in ruins, and we shall not give them time to recover. What those pathetic fools don't know is that the acquisition of Space Station Delta is but the first step in my creation of the most powerful weapon in history, the Pyramid of Darkness. When these control cubes are placed at each of the four corners of the Earth, they will link with the space station to form this pyramid, beneath which no electrical energy source will function. Without energy to power its vehicles and factories or run its military and defense systems, the world will crumble beneath our heel. The first control cube is almost completed, and when it and its duplicates are in position, Cobra shall rule forever! <laughs> I'll form a unit and set up headquarters in a new location. The rest of you start rebuilding here. Cobra has bitten us once too often, and we're gonna start fighting back. I don't know what those cubes are for, but I'm sure they're not dice for a giant crap game. Cobra Commander, the Great Snake rules forever. You may enter.
That's their password. Hail Cobra Commander, the Great Snake rules forever. Repeat, repeat. <clears throat> Hail Cobra Commander, the Great Snake rules forever. Intruders, intruders. Intruders must be exterminated. Exterminated. Exterminated! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. In our next episode, Snake Eyes and Shipwreck steal a top-secret laser disc, but Cobra catches them red-handed, and this leads to a hair-raising chase through the treacherous Enterprise City subway system. Meanwhile, aboard Space Station Delta, what creates havoc with gravity as Dusty risks his life to reach the command center, and Clint and Lady J make a fatal attempt to stop Destro from planting the first control cube. All in the next exciting episode of G.I. Joe, The Pyramid of Darkness. On the planet Cybertron, life existed, but not life as we know it today. Intelligent robots that could think and feel inhabited the cities. They were called Autobots and Decepticons. But the brutal Decepticons were driven by a single goal, total domination. They set out to destroy the peace-loving Autobots, and a war between the forces of good and evil raged across Cybertron. Devastating all in its path, draining the planet's once rich sources of energy. The Autobots, on the verge of extinction, battled valiantly to survive. There's not enough energy in these conductors to last a cortex. Well, at least we found these, Wheeljack. And when these run out? Can't worry about that now. Hey, let's get back to Iacon. Load up! I bet Optimus Prime will be glad to see us. We're nearing the bridge to Iacon. One mega mile to go. Ah, home sweet home. Uh-oh. A Decepticon welcoming committee. Prime told me there. 
there be days like this? <laughs> and you didn't believe him? I do now. We've got to get these energy conductors back to Iacon. I'm right behind you. Mind if I cut in? <laughs> Cybertron's blacker than the inside of a drive shaft. Unless a new supply of energy is found, nobody is going to win this war. When do we start the search mission? Soon as you're ready to launch. Source of energy to be found, the Decepticons must find it first. Autobots are set to launch Megatron. As are we. Shockwave! What is your command, Megatron? You are to stay behind. I entrust Cybertron to you, Shockwave. Fear not, Megatron. Cybertron shall remain as you leave it. Excellent! Now it's merely a matter of time until Optimus Prime admits defeat. The Autobots would have lost eons ago if I'd been calling the shots. Starscream, only a select few ever leave. My time will come, Megatron. Never, never! Prepare to blast off! <laughs> All systems go! Ignition. Report. We are being followed. Decepticons. We have been detected. Stay with them. Let's just blow them away. They've seen us. No. I want to know 
what they're after. Prepare the tractor beam! They've made a magnetic junction! I can't shake them! Fire the laser! Nothing! Power's used up! Release the boarding chute! They're coming aboard! Prepare for battle! Attack! Attack! G-forces! They're dragging us down! We're out of control! The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Again. Quickly, we must revive the other Decepticons! Much time has passed. We are on a planet far from Cybertron, but our mission has not changed. How do we know Cybertron still exists? It must exist. And if this land is filled with resources, we shall return home with the power to build the ultimate weapon and conquer the universe. Starscream! I'm just saying goodbye. Save your energy. The Autobots have taken their last flight. Thanks for the ride, Farm. Too bad you can't go the rest of the way. Explore! Explore! Repair! Repair! Thanks! We'll set up here. Those rocks will serve as our base of operations. Soundwave, prepare plans for a new space cruiser. Starscream, convert the area for construction. What about materials? Use your imagination. Well, any ideas? <laughs> Great, but I'll need some help. Rondo, activate pile drivers. Operation. Destruction. Let's do it! This new planet is rich with sources of energy. But the Decepticons must know this too. So we must find them and stop them. Hound! Right here, Prime. Scout the area. See if you can locate the Decepticons. Just turn me loose, Prime. I'll sniff them out. I'm going to. I want to boot some Decepticon right in his turbocharger. Easy, Cliff Jumper. Just find them. We'll deal with them later. Good luck. Someday I'll be giving the orders, Rumble. You'll do what I say. 
Look, Star Scream. Megatron is strong. He's merciless. He can't be beaten. And you'll never be our leader. I will find a way. Everyone has a weakness. Yeah? Well, not Megatron. We shall see. Now, shake things up a little. I'm impressed. Sure is a lot different than Cybertron out here. Don't fall in love with it, Hound. We won't be staying that long. You smell something, Cliffjumper? No. I do. I think we just found the Decepticons. Follow me. I was right. Let's get down there and bend some metal. He's off your throttle, Cliff Jumper. Remember what Prime said, just find him. What are they doing? Let's find out. I will plunder Earth and steal its precious resources. We can concentrate the energy into energon cubes and store them in the new space cruiser. <laughs> How ironic! By leading us to this planet, the Autobots have sealed their own doom. Cliffjumper, what are you doing? I've got Megatron dead center in my viewfinder. Who could be firing on us? Who even knows we're here? The Autobots. Impossible. They're the only ones. Soundwave, send Laserbeak to investigate. Laserbeak, prepare for flight. Course heading northeast. Now you've done it. Let's burn rubber. What is that thing up there? I don't know, but we can't seem to shake it. Let's split up. It can't follow both of us. Right. At least one of us will get back to Prime. Accelerator down! Eat my dust, bird brain! You couldn't hit an auto butt with a moonbeam! Try this! It's a gas! You don't give up, do you? The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Where'd they get you? I... I think it's my... my drivetrain. Can you transform? I... I don't think so. I'm sorry, hon. It's my fault. I shouldn't have fired on Megatron. <laughs> you shouldn't have missed, you mean? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> right! <laughs> Holler! Pull him off! I can't believe the Autobots survived. <laughs> Neither can Megatron. They thought he'd blow a fuse when he found out. Hey, what's that? Let's find out. <laughs> okay, Reflector. Let's see what you can see. Thundercracker to Soundwave. Proceed, Thundercracker. Alien vehicle approaching. Possible Autobot. Release Ravage. I don't understand it, Joe. Looks like a tornado hit this place. I... I don't like it. Something's wrong. Real wrong. Look out! And that 
That's all we heard, Prime. They're gonna put the energy in some kind of cube, then haul it back to Cybertron. Jazz, organize a battle unit. We're going after them. Pow! Trailbreaker! Wheeljack! Ironhide! Mirage! Sunstreaker! Side swipe! Autobots, start your engines! Ready, Prime? Let's roll! <laughs> has returned. He has found a source of energy. Excellent. Excellent. Give me a hand, Spike. We gotta raise this bit. Flush it out. Right, Dad. I'll get the bailer. Die! Die! Look! Up there! What is it? What are they? Everybody, come on! Come on! Stop! Let go of my dad! will return after these messages. In the next episode of the Transformers, the evil Decepticons create a tremendous tidal wave. Optimus Prime battles his arch enemy Megatron high atop Sherman Dam. And Megatron discovers the ruby crystals of Burma, all in the next exciting episode of the Transformers.
Once upon a time in the sewer, there were four cute little turtles. Who suddenly went through this incredible mutation process and became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> and then there was a sweet, charming rock musician. Who goes out of control, changes and mutates into Bebop. Oh, my, my. Look, they've decided to play together. <laughs> and, of course, they all live happily ever after. Now they mutate. From Playmates. Speak up quietly. The foot are about to ambush the turtle's pure places. But thanks to the turtle's periscope, it's no surprise. Take cover! The foot are attacking with their sewer ball. Watch out, turtles, or you'll wind up in the recovery room. Oh, no! Retro Mutant News! The Shredder's up to his old tricks. And speaking of going up, the turtles are taking the elevator to street level to make a call on Shredder using their private line. Reach out and crush someone. From Playmate. Something we take for granted. It's simply a day-to-day -day fact of life in the big city. But occasionally, a crime occurs so baffling that even we city dwellers sit up and take notice. Three scientific equipment companies, three robberies, and what was stolen? Two positron accelerators, four reverse flux polarity indicators, and uh, one parabolic sine wave generator. And what does all that equipment do? I have absolutely no idea. But although the missing goods are high-tech, the method by which they were stolen is not. These incisions could only have been made with a samurai sword. And look at this rope. This can only be the work of ninjas, the ancient band of Japanese warriors. And how can you tell that from the rope, Professor? Well, look for yourself. It's made in Japan. Ninjas, a thousand-year-old clan of assassins. Is it possible they're here in the city? We're at Technology Central to answer that question, for it may be the next target of these mysterious burglars. I'll report as soon as anything develops. April O'Neil, Happy Hour News. Back to you, Jeff. Come on, April, let's beat it. Nothing's gonna happen here. What are you, a bunch of sissies? This is gonna be fun. April. We've got a million bucks in state-of-the-art equipment here. I'm not going to let it sit around in the street in the dead of the night. <laughs> We're the news media, for crying out loud. Who'd want to hurt us? Uh, them, maybe? The camera! Get to the camera! I, uh, I think I left the iron on in my apartment. And, yeah, I just remembered roller derbies on, uh, TV tonight. Oh, I, and I got an appointment with my, uh, dentist. We got a message for you from the big boss man. He wants you should stick to reporting fashion shows. Oh, okay, sure. No problem. He don't believe you. Something 
overall Neil. Chill out, homeboy. Hey, watch you with that thing, pal! Oh, whoever you are, you are dead! Dress funny too. I don't know who you are, but, but thanks. You're not human. Bingo. Yeah, we're dealing with a real mind here. You're you're turtles. Yep, so we are. I can't handle this. Oh, she's no fun. She fainted. What the devil? I don't believe this. Oh. I wish you'd stop doing that. Come on, lady, wake up. Ah! Hey, it's tough trying to carry on a conversation with you, you know? Perhaps some food would aid the young lady's powers of speech. Pepperoni and ice cream. Yeah, I, I want some of the jelly beans and mushrooms. Yeah, give me a slice of anchovies and peanut butter. This is seriously grossing me out. She talks, she walks. How can you eat that junk? How can you eat raw fish? Look. Hold it, guys. Now, April, would you like to tell us why those men were chasing you around the sewers? Well, yeah, we don't get many humans down here. I was doing a story about a bunch of thefts at scientific equipment companies. Hey, I'm sitting here talking to a bunch of turtles. And their pet rat? Who the heck are you guys? Perhaps I can best explain. The story of my young friends and I is really the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi. In Japan, there is a ninja clan known as the Foot. Hamato Yoshi was their Shidoshi, teacher of the warrior ways of enlightenment. Yoshi was a quiet man who loved art, but one student sought to usurp his leadership of the Foot Clan. Oroku Sake. Then one day, a master sensei, a teacher, visited the Foot School, and Oroku Sake made his move. <laughs> Impudent dog! Bow before our beloved master. So, you plot to kill our honorable sensei. Disgraceful. Mm. For this misdeed, you should be banished from the Foot Clan altogether. What say you, all wise sensei? Oh, okay. I say, throw the bomb out. In disgrace, Yoshi fled to America. Penniless was forced to live in the sewers, in these underground tunnels. His only friends were the rats. Until one day, some new friends came down the drain. Back in Japan, under Orokusaki's evil leadership, the Foot Clan turned into an army of crime. Stick him up! Back in New York, Yoshi lived happily with his turtles and rats. But then, one day... <gasps> so, Hamaru Yoshi found the turtles covered with goo. Bingo! You get the feeling all this is starting to lead somewhere? It was a powerful mutagen. It caused whoever touched it to take on the form of whatever animal they had most recently been in contact with. The turtles started becoming human. They had most recently been with Yoshi. But Yoshi had most recently been with 
the rats. Then Hamato Yoshi is you! You got a mind like a steel trap, lady. My four young wards nicknamed me Splinter for obvious reasons. I, in turn, named them after my favorite Renaissance painters. I knew the outside world would consider them freaks, so I trained them in the art of ninjutsu. Donatello, whose simple wooden bull can disarm any adversary. Raphael, no sword on earth can withstand his side. Leonardo, his swordsmanship is unmatched. Michelangelo, master of the whirling nunchakus. And master of the whirling pizzas. And that is how they became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, do you know who dropped that mutagen on you? No, but one day we're gonna find him and force him to make our master human once more. So, what do you think? I think you committed those robberies. Wait a minute, did I miss something here? Ain't you up on current events, lady? We just saved your life. The thieves were ninjas, pal. Well, yeah, but were they turtles? It doesn't matter. You're still news. No way. You put us on TV and every scientist in town will be after us. Hey, we spent half our lives crawling around the bottom of a glass bowl, and we ain't going back. Which means you're staying here until we work this out. Where the devil's April? She's been gone almost a day. Well, it's not like she was irreplaceable or anything. Look at that. Another high-tech warehouse hit last night. This story's heating up, and I have to lose my second best reporter. April wasn't your second best reporter. Well, third best. Maybe. Hey, I got it! She stays here with us for the rest of her life. Try again, Mr. Wizard. Look, why don't we just find these ninja thieves for her? And perhaps she could help us find a cure for Splinter's condition. If you get me my story. We'll get your story. Just make sure you leave us out of it. Now, wait a minute. She's going to help us? Yeah. So? Well, uh, no offense, lady, but um, you're a human. Exactly. She can get into places we can't. Well, I guess anything's worth a try, no matter how weird. Those four weirdos beat the pants off us, Mr. Shredder. I know that, you idiots. Did you get a good look at them? Did they look like reptiles? I didn't get such a good look, you know? Get out, you Kraton! They could have been turtles. I must know. All right, let's check out the spot where we fought those punks. Maybe they left a clue behind. Are you out of your shell, Donatello? Come on, you think those punks should just leave evidence lying around? gonna find anything here. Ninja pizza? Well, what do you know? Rock, dudes. Do you realize what this is? The crucial piece of evidence we were looking for? The clue which will lead us to the heart of the evil ninja empire? Nah, even better. It's a place where we can get some pizza. Right on! Okay, I'll head up there and check it out. No, no, April. It's too dangerous. You wouldn't last five minutes in a ninja pizza parlor. I love saying lines like that. We'd better go with you, April. That's right. And besides, we're hungry! Look, guys, if you draw a lot of attention, we'll be in big trouble. Relax. We know all about humans. How? We watch a lot of TV. We're in big trouble. Ah! Monsters! Ah! Relax, lady. We... One twitch in your history, scum! Now back off! Nice and easy! Oh, we're gonna get nowhere unless we do something about your looks. Wait here. Here's looking at you, kid. Well, it's a slight improvement. Now just keep quiet and don't draw attention to yourselves. Oh, my man. Free card money. Got the card, Slim. Nice 
going, Raphael. Only half the people on the street saw that. I'm Leonardo. Oh, sorry. Fake teeth! Goofy noses! Get them here! Hey, April, why do humans want to make themselves dumber looking than they already are? I really don't know, Michelangelo. I'm Raphael. Oh, sorry. But, uh, April? Yes? Why do human beings want to make themselves deaf? I really have no idea, Leonardo. I'm Donatello. Sorry! Uh, April? What? Oh, we're here. Oh. Ninja dry cleaners? Ninja shoe repairs? Ninja video rentals? Ninja dentist? Ow! Oh, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something suspicious about this neighborhood. Hiya! Hey, come on! I'm starving, guys! Don't you guys think about anything but pizza? Not unless we have to. Welcome to Ninja Pizza, home of the nice slice. Don't you think there's something a little strange about this place? Boy, I'll say. They don't have pepperoni. No, I mean those ninjas. It's just a gag. Come on, who ever heard of a bunch of ninjas hanging out in a pizzeria? You're a bunch of ninjas, and you're in a pizzeria. And for that matter, who ever heard of talking turtles? This April O'Neil is getting closer to my operation. I blame myself. I should not have sent a punk to do a ninja's job. Uh, one sashimi pizza and three whipped cream pizzas. Uh, eat in good health. Listen, uh, what happened to April? Oh, I guess she wasn't hungry. Manhattan Security Services. Security Services? Hmm. Why, of course we can help. We offer protection to many scientific firms throughout the city. Security Team C, report to reception. I got another scientific equipment company lined up, just waiting to be cleaned out. I found him. Send a camera crew to... I'm concerned about April. What is it, Raphael? A threatening note? Worse than that. It's the check! Okay, April, where are you hiding? Hey, it's April's wallet. And over there. April's press pass. Yeah, I'd know that water used chewing gum anywhere. Uh, you get the feeling April's in trouble? Well, either that, or she's got a big hole in her purse. April's purse. Come on. Careful, Raphael. It could be a trap. Yep, it's a trap. Oh, there is something weird about this. Clang? Did you say clang? Check those dudes out. Dudes, nuts. They're robots. Robots? Let's rock! Haha, <laughs> show him some moves, Donatello! I know that fighting style. It is the foot technique. Could it be? Amato Yoshi still lives? Hey, what the heck? This! Where are these guys getting their gear? Mars? Let's show them the turtles know how to party! Where is 
is everybody? Well, it's late. They probably went home. So, they are up above. But who are they? Hey, look. An Acme Technologies digital video transceiver. This is Big League gear. Whoa, who's the dude with the metal face? They are the turtles. Hamato Yoshi's turtles. They must not discover my Technodrome. All foot. Return to the Technodrome at once. Technodrome? Where's that? It can only be one way. Down! April, wait here. Fine by me. They must be heading for the Technodrome. Stop the turtles at any cost! We'll drown! Hey, what are we worrying about? We're turtles! Yeah, but she's not! <laughs> oh, I owe you one. I don't know if I can take much more of this. Hey, look on the bright side. At least it's not raining. The ninja crime wave is a washout. This is what the ninja robots wore. As I feared, it is the uniform of the Foot Clan. My old enemy, Orokusaki, must be nearby. Relax. Everything about that place went straight down the drain. The robots, perhaps. But Saki is no easy adversary to beat. Master Splitter, if he lives, we'll find him. We turtles don't know the meaning of the word defeat. That's right! We never bothered to look it up in the dictionary. Don't you guys take anything seriously? Of course we do. Like what? I should have guessed. Oh, well. Give me a slice of the bananas and sausage, will you? Popper gun, each sold separately. The real Ghostbusters, new from Kenner. Ghostbusters! Each sold separately. Break out the new equipment! Ghost Trap 6, Ecto Goggles down! It's Marshmallow Man! Ecto Popper ready! Neutrono Blast to charge! Roast him! Got him! We ain't getting him! Go! <laughs> It's the Ghost Trap from the real Ghostbusters. New from Kenner.
We now return to the real Ghostbusters. Somebody seen a ghost? <laughs> All right. What? Hey, Peter, would you look at this? It's raining chocolate. Well, I hope they have soft centers. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, no. Ouch! Ouch! There's a definite PKE source inside. Multiple entities. This could be more dangerous than it looks. This is a unique scientific opportunity here. Come on, let's go. Reminds me of a college party I went to once. <laughs> Three class five full torso apparitions. Amazing! But what bizarre warp dimension do you think they came from? Possibly New Jersey. Hmm. Almost no intellect reading. Egon, Ray, excuse me, but could we move this gig along before all this chocolate makes me break out? Marvels! Why, I, I they dumb looking. <laughs> All right, you party animals, it's cleanup time. Hey! Okay, okay, we know you're in there. So come out with your claws up. <laughs> I don't think they're taking us serious. Okay, Winston, then let them take this. Opening the trap now. <laughs> They're in. We got them. All right. Check. The place is clean. Well, yes and no. It's all over, folks. We got them. Like taking candy from a ghoulie. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm the owner of this plant, and I can't thank you enough. True, true. But as a token of my appreciation, please accept this. A year's supply of my finest chocolates. Oh, yeah, how sweet it is. Hi, guys. Hi, Sandy. And how's the most beautiful secretary in the world? We brought you a little surprise. Uh, guys, how sweet. You're right. I am surprised. What's wrong? Hey, watch it. Guess she's allergic to chocolate. No, they're empty. Empty? empty. Except one. <laughs> Slimer! <laughs> I've been slimed. Yuck. Ah. Stand back, I'm gonna blast them. This time I'm really gonna... Whoa, Peter, take it easy. I'll discipline Slimer. For shame, Slimer. You've been a naughty ghosty. Naughty, naughty. Come on, Ray, he's been a major pain. One more mess up, Slimer, in your history. Got that? Oh, oh. oh we're gonna hit the sheets. It's been a rough night. Oh, hold all our calls, Janine. 
Hey, piece of cake. It was a figure of speech, Slimer, okay? Yeah, be right there, guys. As soon as I dump these class fives into cold storage. Welcome to our 220 volt, 10 megawatt ecto containment unit. Nighty night. somebody. One more mess up, Slimer, in your history. <laughs> It's a mess, Pa. Now what are we gonna do, dear? <laughs> We're gonna run them gum heads right out of business. Right out of bu- uh, 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 But how, Pop? Watch. Yeah! You fool! Whoops. Now, say... Everybody out! Let's go! Rad experience, Skull Scrabbers! We'll take it from here! Oh, it's you, Bob! Have no fear, Dr. Vinkman and his staff are here. Everything is under control. It sure is, thanks to these two wonderful people. And we've got the ugly beast right in here. We're from Ghosts on Us. And you'll be hearing a lot more from us. Better luck next slime. Ghostbusters. <laughs> 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 Ghostbusters, if it goes boo, we know what to do. No, ma'am. This is the real Ghostbusters, not Ghosts R Us. Never mind. Hey, who is Ghosts R Us anyway? I've had 20 calls for them today. 
Yeah, that's what we'd like to know. They're stealing all our customers. I can smell a bogus a mile away, and those guys are definitely bogus. Not according to my PKE meter, Peter. I got a solid reading from their containment unit. There was definitely a Class 5 Phantom in there. Ghostbusters, we're still number one. Mm-hmm. Right. Gotcha. All right, champs. Small Dwarf Hotel, major disturbance. Let's roll. This time, nobody beats the Ghostbusters. Uh-oh. This looks bad. Stand back, folks. Go home, Ghostbusters. This one's a wrap. Thanks to Ghost Sir Who are you guys? Yeah, this was our call. We got the ghosts, ladies and gentlemen. No problem. How'd you get here before us? Because we're numero uno. Yeah, and you are though. You know, there's something very familiar about those guys. Something very ugly about them, too. Whoever they are, they're putting us right out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see those dumb Ghostbusters faces? Look like they'd seen a ghost! <laughs> oh, uh, I hate that stupid tan, Daddy. How much longer do, do we have to do this? One last time, Zonk. Then the Ghostbusters will be history. <laughs> Comb your hair! <laughs> Spook Central calling Ecto-1. Go ahead, Janine. There's something freaky going on here. What's wrong? This whatchamadoodle says we're three ghosts short. That's impossible. Nothing can escape that system unless it's shut down. Hey, wait a minute. That's who those ghosts or us goons look like. The three class fives we nailed this morning. You're right, Peter. Who could forget faces like that? But how did they escape? Oh, no. Somebody must have shut down the containment unit. Slimer? See, I knew I should have blasted him. Hold on, guys. We got a call. Ghostbusters? Stay calm, sir. Help is on the way. Oh, good. The sooner, the better. Yeah, the better the so, the so, uh, quickly. This one's a biggie, guys. An old toy factory in Brooklyn. But what about those escaped class fives? Knowing them, they're probably already there. Then let's go. Let's bag those turkey. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Ah! And we're gonna be ready for them. Uh, a sub toy factory. This place is weird. Look who's talking. What are we doing here then, Pop? Lacking up an old friend, dear. Yeah, Turlock's in there. He's the Class 7 Phantom who haunts this dump. Class 7? Oh, well, that's a lot. <laughs> but they're very powerful. Right. That's why Turlock's gonna make those Ghostbusters run for the next state. <laughs> Watch this. Hey, Turlock! It's me, Slug! Come on out! Come on, Turlock! We need you to do a first-rate haunting for us! <laughs> That's great, Turlock, but we're not ready yet. <laughs> Come on, Turlock, quit kidding around. Oh, wait a minute. Where's Turlock? Disturbed me.
Well, what do you know? For a change, we're actually the first ones here. Make that the second ones here. Would you believe the third one? That's at least a Class 8 free-roaming vapor. Worse, a full magnitude Class 10. Whatever it is, it's about to mash Manhattan into cheese bread. Okay, boys, roundup time. Winston and I'll ride herd. Ray, you and Egon head him off at the pass with Ecto-2. You got it! All systems check. Check. Switching on power. Ready for launch. All right. Let's kick some ectoplasm. All clear behind us. Prepare for launch. Launch! Hey, Egon. Ever gotten around to taking those flying lessons? No. Ah. Just checking. we can contain them there. Check. Ecto-1 to Ecto-2. Looks like our ghosts are headed for the river. But traffic's killing us. Hang on, Winston. I know a shortcut. Uh, Ecto-1, Ecto-2? <laughs> We're on our way. Roger. We'll block the far end of the bridge. Ecto-2 to Ecto-1. We've got them covered at this end. Nice touchdown, Egon. Psychic energy is increasing. We'll have visual contact in four seconds. Three seconds. Two seconds. One second. Trap open. Here they come. They're in. All by themselves. But it's not over yet. <sighs> Ecto-2 to Ecto-1. Uh, we're gonna require some assistance. This is bigger than anything we've ever encountered. Yeah, and it sure looks mad! Hang on, guys. We're almost there. All this is because of Slimer. If he hadn't messed up, we'd be home in our jammies right now. Oh. I don't like that gleam in his eyes. Which eye? He has four. Same thing that hit me. Quit! Aim for the monkey. To take to stop this guy. It's going after Ecto 2, and we can't stop it. All of this is because of Slimer. <laughs> if he hadn't messed up, we'd be home in our jammies right now. Slimer? Slimer, wait! No, 
Slimer! Don't do it! Get ready to jump, Ray. I'm setting her on full power overload. Now! suddenly want sushi. In five seconds, the power unit goes terminal. Slimer, I hate to say it, but... You look marvelous. Now that's what I call a happy ending. Not for everybody. Uh, did we win yet, Pop? Ah, shut up! Sold separately. She any ghosts? Not yet. Pigment, it's back to the bone. Get me out. Looks like you're really into them, Stan. Stop them. Safe. Not so safe. It's like bucket. What a slob. I've been gooped. Activate the turtle monster. We ain't afraid of no ghosts. Peter Venkman, Bad to the Bone and Sludge Bucket with Ectoplasm, each sold separately. Ghostbusters from Kenner. Get out of the way, bad dudes! It's the Turtles Party Wagon. The wacky attack van means good times for the green guys and hard knocks for the foot, especially with the tenderizer. Yeah, and it's a big hit everywhere we go. And look, here comes the turtle cycle with its working handlebar slingshot and armored sidecar. It'll drive Shredder crazy. Yeah, let's step on it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Vehicles and figures each sold separately from Playmates. What's that, Toxie? Yes, that's right. The Toxic Crusaders work for the environment. That's right. They're good cartoons, and they, they're environmental. Oh, greetings from Tromaville, kiddies. I'm your Uncle Lloydie, and welcome to the lovingly recreated DVD of the original TV show, The Toxic Crusaders. Yes, you know, these cartoons were created long before you were born before your mommy and daddy found you under a cabbage leaf. Yes, back in the 80s, the Toxic Crusaders were on their way to becoming a huge success like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you know what syndication means? Yes, this cartoon show should have gone into syndication and I would have become a very rich man. Toxie was well on his way to becoming a household word and we were gonna have all this great merchandise to shill. And then the evil men from the big corporations came and they took Toxie away. Can you say devil-worshipping international media conglomerate? Yes, children, due to a conspiracy, Toxie was taken off the air. But luckily, 13 half hours are beautifully preserved here in the happiest land of Tromaville. And you can watch them on this beautiful, beautiful DVD. Can you say independent company? That's right, independent company, because due to those very bad men, soon Uncle Lloydie will have no work and there will be no independent companies left and Uncle Lloydie will be coming to you asking for a job. So please help Uncle Lloydie and watch the beautifully preserved DVD of The Toxic Crusader. And don't forget to watch some of those great Christmas cartoons that you'll also find here. Well, kids, it's time for Uncle Lloydie to go and cash his welfare check. 
Bye, kids. Bye. outside during an acid rainstorm, it's a horrible way to go. I love this town. Do you know why I love this town? Because you own it. Because it's the most polluted city in the world. And I, Dr. Killamoff, made it that way. Behold my evil genius. If you love your puppy, give him wolf dog food. The dog food that makes your puppy woof all over the place. I gotta get another job. This guy's a loser. I have to get this stupid thing fixed! <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Look, I know you're an evil genius, Doc. What I don't know is where you want me to dump this Chrysolium 90. Ah, yes, Chrysolium. The deadliest toxic waste known to man. Dump it in the last unpolluted city in New Jersey. Dromaville. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Doc. What if some complete and hopeless nerd falls into the gasoleum and transforms into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength? Don't be ridiculous! A complete and hopeless nerd. Oh, I wish I wasn't a complete and hopeless nerd. Maybe then I'd have a girlfriend who loves me for who I am. Or at least confuses me with someone else. Hey, Bimbet, look at Melvin Junko. What a complete and hopeless nerd. Yeah, got me with a rake. Melvin's a real nuclear pee euchre. <laughs> How about if we have some fun with old Melvin and show everybody what a bogus geek he is? <laughs> That's a deaf idea, Bonehead. What's the plan? Sorry. You think he's stupid enough to fall for it? No. Never mind. Yeah, I'll catch you later, babe. Hi, Melvin. You look really, really cute today. I do? Oh, yeah. In fact, I think it's time I dumped scuzzy old Bonehead and started dating a really cute guy like you. You do? Would I like? So, what are you doing tonight, huh? Well, at 7 o'clock, I practice burping. At 8, I wax my chicken. Then from 9 to 10, I like to smell my armpits. <laughs> How about if you meet me at the pool after the club closes and we get to know each other better? Know what I mean? No, but I'll be there. Great. Oh, would you also do me one big favor? You want to hear me burp? No. I want you to wear a special outfit on our date tonight. A tutu? Oh, gee, I don't know. Please, Melvy. It would mean so much to little Bim Bed if big, handsome Melvy Welby would if you wear a tutu. Uh, okay, if it means so much to you. 
<laughs> you sure you don't want to hear me burp? What a moron. Oh, boy. This is my lucky day. I got a girlfriend. Yippee! <laughs> Sorry. I hope Invent thinks I look okay for our date. Pink isn't really my color. I hope my mop doesn't clash. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Been bad. I'm ready. Been bad? She fell for a one. You look real good in pink. <laughs> I just have a strangest feeling I made a mistake sending that Grossolium to Trommelville. A complete and hopeless nerd? Nah. <laughs> Please help me! I'm changing into something horrible! I'm changing into a school teacher! <laughs> oh no! I'm changing into something even more horrible now! A movie producer. Ah! Oh no! I'm changing again! I'm changing into a... A hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength! Ah! Uh, what? Oh, I've got a big problem. Mom, it's me, Melvin. Melvin, my son! Oi. Oh. oh, what am I gonna do? Now that I'm a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength, where will I even live? Try the toxic waste dump. Thanks, Mom. I knew I could count on you. My new home. Oh, well, I guess it isn't so bad. Look at the bright side. How many people have a home that glows in the dark? <laughs> Well, hi, little fella. Why, you're a cute little blob. Let's see, what'll I call you? I know. How about Blobby? <laughs> well, Blobby, here's where I will live my life, all alone, with no one to love or care for me but you. Hey, what's that beautiful sound? Something we want. Wanna guess what it is? <laughs> Gee, do I win anything if I guess right? I really could use a microwave or maybe a waffle iron. I'd love a waffle iron. Oh, I know what I need. How about a socket wrench? You, you accordion, Dumbo. Give it now. Hey, this is weird. Something bad is happening nearby. I can feel it in my body. Somebody help me, please. Let go of my now I'm sure somebody's hurting an accordion. Help! Hey, you punks, leave that girl alone. Oh, look, fellas, it's Melvin the Mop Boy. Your days of picking on nerds and accordion players are over, Bonehead. Let's get him. <laughs> This'll teach you to mess with a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. <laughs> Hey, man! What's happening to me? I better get out of here! Feel lucky, punk? Not really, no. Are you okay? Fine, thanks to you. I did lose my contact lenses, so I can't see too good. Gosh, you're very handsome. Boy, 
This really is my lucky day. Yvonne, gee, that's a pretty name. Thanks. It means pretty girl who walks in sunlight or big rusty pokey scooper. I forget which. So what did I call you? Well, I used to be called Melvin, but now that I've had a small accident with toxic chemicals, I think I need a new name. <gasps> how about if I call you Chemicals or Mr. Chemicals or Bucky Dent? Or how about... Toxie, that's it. You can call me Toxie. Uh-oh. I'm getting that weird feeling again. Something evil is happening, and it's happening real close. Help! Bad guys are gonna destroy our orphanage so they can build a poisonous chemical plant! Hmm, where could that evil be? Huh? Hey, bad guys are trying to destroy that orphanage. That's not right. And my mop is alive. I bet that happened when it fell into the toxic chemicals with me. Okay, mop. Let's you and me clean up this mess. Have no fear. Toxie's here. Let go of her, you creep. Oh, thank you, Toxie. You're welcome, sweetheart. Now, please step aside. A battle against evil is no place for a little girl. I'm having a ball! Hey, you shot my tutu! Now I'm really mad! Excuse me, but I need this vehicle to fight evil. <laughs> Can you tell our home viewers what just happened here? I'm not sure, but I think my new boyfriend talks to his mom. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what happened. My son, Melvin Junko, who is now a hideously deformed creature with superhuman size and strength, saved those poor orphans from being thrown out of their home. We understand your name is Melvin Junko. Not anymore. From now on, my name is Toxie, and I'm a crusader against pollution, crime, and other stuff. So, I guess we could call you the... Toxic Crusader. Hey, yeah, I like that. The Toxic Crusader. Neat. No! How could this be happening? I told you so. What did you say? Nothing. It must be stopped. This, this Toxic Crusader must be eradicated. All my plans to pollute the world will be destroyed. Let me take care of the toxic crusader. Why should I give you the pleasure of killing him? Because he did this to me! All right, then. Do away with him and you will be well rewarded. No sweat. You can say goodbye to the toxic crusader. Goodbye! <laughs> I'm a hero, I'm feeling warm and snuggly Got a girlfriend, although I'm all but ugly I'm a hero, I'm feeling warm and snuggly I'm a hero <laughs> What's the matter, little girl? <laughs> Coxie, my kitty cat stuck in the tree Aw, oh, don't cry, I'll get your kitty down Mop, do your stuff <laughs> Here you go, honey. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks, Toxie. You're the best. I'm a hero. I'm fe- Hey, what happened to the happy music? Oh, well. Okay, Toxic Crusader. Get ready to become the Crushed Crusader. <laughs> Uh-oh, 
I got that old feeling. Oh, no. Look out, little girl. Look out! Are you okay, Toxie? Actually, I'm feeling a little run down. He's moving in for the kill. This is the end of the Toxic Crusader. I don't know, Dr. Killamoff. What if old Toxie jumps out of the way and defeats Bonehead with his super-powered mop? Don't be ridiculous! Are you ready, mop? All you saw. What did you say? Nothing. I will have to put an end to this toxic crusader myself. Psycho, prepare my radiation rangers for battle while I prepare a special weapon just in case. He still might beat us if he's helped by other hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength. Psycho! I grow weary of your ridiculous ideas. Sorry, the bad guys are so stupid. It's me, Toxie. Oh, Toxie, I missed you so. <laughs> Honey, where are you? I'm right here, Yvonne. Oh, goody. I have a surprise for you. I got new glasses so I can finally see your gorgeous face. <gasps> Yvonne, no. <laughs> oh, I should have known this would happen. How could a beautiful, intelligent girl like Yvonne ever fall for a hideously deformed creature such as myself? But I did fall for you, Toxie. Huh? But the minute you saw how ugly I am, you screamed. You're not ugly, you're very handsome. It's your toy that made me scream. Now that's ugly. I mean, more than ugly, it's gross. Okay, yeah. so she's just beautiful. Can I help you? Say your prayers, Toxic Crusader! Why? Am I going to bed now? No, you are going to die for standing in the way of my plans to pollute Tromaville. But why do you want to pollute Tromaville? What good does it do anybody to poison the environment? I've always wondered that myself. It may be poison to humans, but not to the people of my planet, Smokula. Oh, man! I'm working for a cockroach? For the smogulans to take over this planet, the air and water must be first poisoned to our liking. But if you poison our planet, as if we can't do it ourselves, then all human and animal life will die. What's your point? Oh, I'm definitely in the presence of some big-time evil. My point is this, Bughead. This is my planet even though I don't look like I'm from it. And this is my town, which means it's my job to keep it safe, beautiful, and free from pollution. Then prepare to die, toxic crusader. Apocalypse, no! I sure could use some help. Excuse me, but uh, me and my friend are looking for a hideously deformed creature named Toxie. Have you seen him? He's up there. Oh, yeah, that's him. Tonight. Thank you. You fools, get him! I hate this part. It's cleanup time! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, my name's Nozone. This is my friend, Major Disaster. We're both hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength. Yeah, really? Me too! Yeah, we know. We saw you on TV and wanted to come join you. Well, I have to warn you, it's a tough job. There's no general plan, and we don't get any piece of the merchandising. Oh, it's okay. We just want to fight bad guys. Great, you're hired. What's Major Disaster doing? Uh, he has the power to control plants. It takes him a few seconds to get going, though. Hey! hey. What's Let's going go. on? Let's Let go! go. Let go! Hey. Oh. hey, that's a cool superpower. Release Pluto. <laughs> 
at that thing and use your sneeze power. You got it, buddy. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, the kitty litter is drying up the oil slick. Oh, Mop, are you okay? This can't be happening! Other two hideously deformed creatures helping the toxic crusader. I would have defeated him. I told you so. Ah! Oh, Toxie, I'm so proud of you. You saved Tromaville. Of course he saved Tromaville. He's my son. He's a hero. I'm no hero, Mom. I'm just doing my part to keep Tromaville beautiful, safe, and free from pollution. Gee, what an amazing coincidence. All three of us were turned into hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength by accident. That's right. I was a soldier in the army when I fell into a radioactive swamp. And I was a pilot when I flew through a hole in the ozone and crashed my plane into a silo of radioactive pepper. Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. Well, lucky for us, we were all hideously deformed. Because now we're the Toxic Crusaders! <laughs> Sounds like a good name for a TV show. I brought some dinner for you boys. I made your favorite burgers. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? I wrote a new song about my brave, handsome boyfriend and his two new buddies. Listen! Hideously deformed, superhumanly strong. They're the toxic crusaders, and they fight against wrong. A one, a two, a three. We're, We're the toxic. toxic. Crusaders, we're the toxic crusaders. We're the toxic crusaders. Of that we're pretty sure of. We're the toxic crusaders. We're the toxic crusaders. Of that we're pretty sure of. One ugly dude. It's Scumbug, the turtle exterminator, half man, half cockroach. He's bugging Muckman, the mutated sewer worker, and his little mutie pal Joe Eyeball to join Shredder's evil foot clan. Muckman is just oozing under the pressure, but before he can answer, wing not the turtle's wacky vampire bat buddy, and his mosquito sidekick Trulus decide to wing it, and the roach bugs out. Good talk about batting them around. From Playmates. The Ghostbuster Swoon! Yeah! I know something scary. Cavities. Time to brush. Aw, Mom! Hey! I've got a Slimer toothpaste! Ooh! It's, it's Slimer! Let's play Cavity Buster! Toothbrush, Ray! Check the gun! Slimer toothpaste, Ray! Check the gun! Ready? Let's brush! No ghosts in there, Mom! Slimer, Graper Bubblegum Fluoride Toothpaste, available at Target, Osco, Save On, Stop and Shop, and Finest. Hey, Paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! We're with the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. So hang on to your seat. Get ready for adventure and remarkable feats. You'll meet Koopas and Troopas, the 
about this guy but i forgot all right okay 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 you forgot okay look the only thing we can do now is make sure that we keep them out of muscle touching range all right don't go away unless you're that pesky marianne and luigina let's hope that lila zeta doesn't get to our place before we do Yo, yo, yo it's the mario brothers and plumbing's the game found the secret water zone while working on the drain lend the princess a hand in the mushroom land Turn the action with the plumbers you'll be hooked on the brothers Plumber's log number 437. We arrived in a dry and deadly desert on a lumpy camel. We were in search of the legendary Aladdin's lamp. Princess Toadstool needed its magic to free her people from King Cooper's evil clutches. Mamma mia! We should have rented a camel with air conditioning. Water! Water! I'll even settle for some meat sauce. Hey! A waterfall! Ah, a nice cool shower. <sighs> Yuck! Camel slobber! Mario, it's a mirage. The sun's hard boiled your brain. Guys, control yourselves. We've got to ignore all these mirages or we'll never find Aladdin's lamp. Too bad we gotta ignore that swimming pool. A swimming pool? Where? Whoopee! Past 20 is a rocky fungus! Ah, it's a trap! Huh? It's a trampoline! Whoa, no! It's a palace! With a flip-top roof! Ah, it appears I have visitors dropping yeah. in. Splendid! Once again, my fake swimming pool trick worked. Where are we? And who are you? My dear, I am the magnificent Sultan Pajba. This is my luxurious palace, where you and your companions will be my miserable slaves forever! <gasps> That's a generous offer, Pasho pal, but we'll pass. Ah! Guard, throw them in the slave quarters, but bring me the pretty one. I guess he means her. These priceless jewels are yours when you join my harem. Me join a harem? Oh, give me a break. Harems are from the stupid olden days. I like the stupid olden days. Besides, you have no choice. <laughs> Yo! Lay off, bud! I get your yow point! Look at that loot! Diamonds, gold, rubies. It must be worth over a hundred bucks. We lucked out, Luigi. 
Feast your eyes on Aladdin's lamp. When the god falls asleep, we'll swipe it and use its magic to escape and free the princess. It's pretty thick glass, but this baby has cut through some pretty tough pieces. So what's all the magic mumbo-jumbo about that lamp? And what do you do? Pull a rabbit out of it? Come on, Luigi. Don't you know the legend of Aladdin? There's a powerful genie inside, and he can't... Stop flapping your lips! Someone's coming! Sire, sire! Sire, the princess is impossible. She refuses to wear the harem veils and roller skates. No matter. I've tired of the wench. I already placed an ad in the harem recycler, offering her to the highest bidder. You're selling the princess? Quick! We gotta find a safe place to make this lamp work. Mario, don't try to kid me. How could a genie be in that lamp? See for yourself. All I gotta do is rub it. <sighs> For. This better be important! Are you really magic? I mean, really magic? Are you a genie? Hey, stupid! What else could I be cooped up in this cramped lamp? You! Hey, looks like you rubbed out the wrong way. Terrific! A lousy lamp stuck on my foot! I hope you're satisfied! Didn't mean to bother you, ma'am, but we need your magic to... Your genie better have some super magic. Some creep just arrived to bite a princess. A creep named King Koopa. I'll give you three urns of dried dates for her. That's my final offer. I won't take less than 54 urns of chopped chicken liver. Oh, mighty genie of the lamp, more beautiful than baked lasagna, more desirable than pepperoni, I humbly beg you to save the princess. Stop whining! I'll see what I can do. I'll cast a magic spell! Phew! What's that awful odor? made a magic smell! So I goofed. Well, you don't have to make a stink over it, you know. Oh, no! Koopa flew to Koop! Help! You're mine, princess. All mine! <laughs> Why am I at the table little Lila? Why don't you watch this? Now, back to our story. Watch this. Prepare yourself for a long, torturous journey, princess. Where are you taking me? Far, far away, where your Budinsky buddies can never save you. Koopa's getting away. We'll never catch him on foot. We need your Hocus Pocus. Can you make us fly? Fly? Do you know what a drain that is on me? No problem. Any drain you got, we can fix. We're plumbers. Tell you what, you make us fly and I'll grease your palm with a gold coin. Now you're talking. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Make them fly. I need the dough. Hey! hey! How did I do that? Check out one of those used flying carpet lots. Talk about economy class. I think I see Cooper's carpet way over there. Oh boy, full speed ahead. Oh, 
not rare. My evil scheme is right on schedule. Soon we will be flying over some nasty quicksand. <laughs> and that's where I'll bid you adieu. Princess. A 
about a carpet cleaner? <laughs> I hate to leave, but we've got to go out and get some refreshments. Hold on, well, give me the list. Two pounds of grapes. Two pounds of grapes. Two pounds of uh, figs. Two pounds of figs. Four dozen tangerines. Four dozen tangerines? Oh, they're alive. He's a big guy. You're right. Let's hope he doesn't show up early. But more importantly, let's hope our stupid cousins don't show up. Come on. Go. Close the door, eh? Okay, I got your covers. Mario, Luigi? I'm a little early. They probably just went to get some refreshments, and I'll just make myself at home. All right. <sighs> it's him! Ooh, I recognize uh, those muscular shoulders, uh, that muscular neck, uh, and that muscular hair. We're uh, Luigi and uh, Marianne with the cousins. Yes, don't we look just like them? Everybody does it so. <laughs> what you look like is the Looney Tunes. I'm out of here. No, 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 no. We will find the Mario and Luigi for you just a minute. And Luigi, hit the road. Wait a minute. How come I always get it in dirty work? Huh? <laughs> Of yourself, <laughs> lousy, wildy, so cute. <laughs> so, Lyle, why don't you watch me dance? Nah, I ate recently. Let's just watch the, the next Legend of Zelda. I don't mind. Sort of on my leg. Tell me something. I don't know, Lyle. You big heads. It's smelly. Oh. Lyle. Hey, jeez. You got here early, huh? Luckily, you're not too late. <laughs> and Marianne, good to see you. Get lost. Luigi, can I talk to you? Sure. What is going on here? Oh, Lyle, I'm sorry. Mario and I went for refreshments. I got back. As I could. Yeah, well, I met your cousin. Yeah, no, sorry <laughs> about that. Luigi went to look for Mario and you. I'm starting to get worried. I better go look for them. Oh, good idea, Marianne. And while you're out there, check out Alaska. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget tonight about the dancing. Dancing? Hey, Lyle. Whoa, I can't believe it. The guy's a legend. Hey, Lyle, good to see you. Yeah, well, it's nice to see you in pants. Oh, Mario. Marianne and Luigina were all over this poor guy. I got here just in time. Could you please excuse my dumb cousins, Lyle? Oh, Lyle! Lizzie, we have to say goodbye. G 
Goodbye. I, I thought you wanted to go dancing. You know, we just spotted Mel Gibson, and we're going to track him home. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky break, I'll hail. Hey. Gibson. What's wrong? Kind of looking forward to going dancing. I got a nerve of that Mel Gibson taking my girls. <laughs> you're such a killer, Lyle. <laughs> Whoa. If you see Mel Gibson, tear off the shirt for us, would you? Till next time, everybody. Do the Mario. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all now come on now just like that Deep. what's there up dude whoa join the turtles on foot patrol in their battle ready sewer tubes featuring wacky pizza slice and oars depth charge and rotating foot blaster let me show you my new toy it's the foot ski with its deadly harpoon gun, shredding torpedoes, and electric leeches. Could this be the end of good, clean fun in the sewer? Here goes the neighborhood. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From Playmates. Hey, look at this radio I found. Autobot Intruder. Where? Here. There's a big rabbit attack. Introducing Blaster. He looks like an innocent radio, but transformed, he's the powerful Autobot communicator. Open his captive blaster! Watch out for Soundwave! Oh, that's it! It's Soundwave at first sight! Blaster and Prime will stop him! The Transformers! The Transformers, each sold separately from Hasbro. Welcome to Video Land. and dangerous world of Metroid, the evil mother brain is about to discover a sinister secret. Power! I must have more power! Uh, here, mother brain, uh, take my flashlight batteries. Not that kind of power, you withering weakly! Whoa! I want the power to reach my destiny! The power to rule video land! But most important of all, the power to destroy the princess and that madly captain in. Metroid mirror on my wall. Tell me how to crush them once and for all. Hidden within Mount Icarus is towering peak. The three sacred treasures contain the power you seek. For 10,000 years, they've been sight unseen. But bring the treasures together and you'll soon be queen. Yes, Queen Mother Brain, Supreme Dictator of Video Land. What a wonderful boss. Give me the princess. Yes, Mother Brain. Meanwhile, at the Palace of Power. Kevin, hurry! Uh, don't worry, princess. I'll be right there in a flash. Oh! Nice try, Kavinicus. Whoa! Size Donkey Kong Simulator! What a concept! I hope I'm not interrupting anything. 
If you've called to threaten us again, it won't work, Mother Brain. You're absolutely right, my dear. Threatening hasn't worked. And I apologize for my rude behavior. All of this fighting gets us nowhere. What do you say we settle our differences in a more sportsmanlike way? I don't trust her. She's up to something. What do you suggest, Mother Brain? A challenge. We'll hold a video Olympics on Mount Icarus. My warriors, uh, uh, athletes, against what? Captain Ian and his end team. If we lose, we'll never set foot off Metroid again. If we win, I'll be the new princess of Video Land. You princess? <laughs> we've got to give her the benefit of the doubt. Woo. But this is what we've been waiting for, your Heineckus. A chance for peace. I know, but Mother Brain can't be trusted. What if it's a trick? Well, if it is, what better way to find out than to go along with it? What if we lose? Lose? With me on our team? Don't be ridiculous. With Captain M leading us, we'll have the mega power to win. What do you say, your highness? Well, I guess... You're on, Mother Brain. Wonderful! We'll see you at Mount Icarus Coliseum tomorrow for the games. And for your funerals, booze! <laughs> I hope we've made the right decision. Don't worry, Princess. With a little workout, we'll be unbeatable. A short while later in the palace courtyard, Kevin and the others go into training to prepare themselves for the upcoming games. All right, guys. We've got to get into prime shape if we're going to win. Simon Belmont is always in prime shape. I can out jump rope you with my eyes closed. <laughs> hey, stop! Take it easy, stupid whip! Cut it out! Whoa! Whoa! I'm not too sure about <laughs> you, Simon, but your whip's in great shape. <laughs> Very funny. What am I supposed to do with these balls, Captain N? It's simple, Mega Man. You just place it like this and throw it as far as you can. <laughs> like that. Go ahead, you try it. Hey! Watch out at this! That was incredible! I know you want to help, Duke, but dogs aren't allowed to compete. Are they? You can count on me to win the archery event, Princessicus. No! What, may I ask, were you aiming at? The target. Does this look like a target to you? Oh! Here, let me show you how to hit the bullseye. Why <laughs> <laughs> oh, you big ape? <laughs> Halfway across video land at the strange world of Punch Out, Mother Brain's minions are also getting ready for the games. Potato, two potatoes, three potatoes, four. After I skip the rope, I eat one potato more. Ah, delicious. I love punching the punching bag. But I love biting them even better. <laughs> All right, King Hippo. Let's see if you can live this. Uh, my fate. <laughs> no sweat. Hey, Mother Brain. How'd you like the way I cleaned the dirt this way? I'll clean your face, dirt, if you don't stop fooling around. Whoa. 
We're practicing for the games just like you told us to. I didn't expect you to practice sports. I expected you to practice cheating, you hippopotamus head. Well, why do we need to cheat if you're just going to destroy them with the power of the three sacred treasures? Because, you cauliflower brain. Winning the games will improve my image as Princess of Video Land. Well, if it's cheating she wants, it's cheating she'll get. Like my famous wrecking ball punch. <laughs> yeah, and my broccoli bazooka. Why you? No, wait, it was an accident. I'll give you an accident on purpose. Defend yourself. Okay, you asked for it. I'll squash you. No! And I'll beat you. Huh? And I'll get you in an artist chokehold. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna give you the old flying hippo head clap jam slam. Meanwhile, back at the Palace of Power, the princess grows fearful of losing Mother Brain's challenge. I'm the most handsome, so after we win the games, my face goes on the cereal box. Hey! I should be on the box, because I'm the strongest. Huh? The games are being held on my world, so I should be on the box, because... You no, always you're always hogging the stuff, I wouldn't be on the... Stop it! None of you are going to be in a box if we don't win the games tomorrow. Don't worry, Princess. I know how to get these guys in shape. All right, 100 push-ups. Let's move it. The next day on Mount Icarus, thousands have gathered to watch as their fate is decided in the Video Olympics. Now don't forget to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Right! right. Now remember, it's not whether you win or lose. But how you play the game. No, you idiot! No! I've arranged for the events to take us to the three locations where the sacred treasures are buried. And once I possess their sacred powers, I'll destroy Captain Inn and the Princess. Then Video Land will be mine! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Video Land, let the games begin! You can do it, Kevin. I know you can. The first event, Greco Tag Team Wrestling. Too small to wrestle. If King Hippicus sits on me, I'll be Squashicus Maximus. They picked their names out of a hat, Kid Icarus. We'll just have to do the best we can. Just a moment. There's been a mistake in the draw. King Hippo's out of the match. Wrestling for King Hippo will be Donkey Kong. <laughs> First to pin an opponent to the mat is the winner. No holds barred. You take care of Eggplant Wizard. I'll handle Donkey Kong. Yeah, sure I will. Come on, Kid Icarus. Make your move. <laughs> what a swim. 
And every shrimp needs a shrimp salad. Oops, almost forgot the breadstick. Kikaris, you gotta use leverage. <laughs> One, two, uh, Donkey Kong has been tied! Sacred treasures, Mother Brain? We're gonna pulverize those pipsqueaks! I'm sure we are! But that's no reason I shouldn't have the greatest source of power in Video Land! Go get me the first sacred treasure! That's not fair! Donkey Kong weighs more than you! Are you kidding? He weighs more than the Chicago Bears! In the next event, Mega Man and Dr. Wily will compete in a 400 yard dash! Go, Mega Man! You can do it! Dr. Wily is falling behind as Mega Man approaches the finish line. Mega Man! He's disintegrated! And Dr. Wily wins the electric maze dash. It's two to nothing for Mother Brain's team. Get this guy off me before I have you frozen in butter sauce! Uh, uh, so sorry, Mother Brain. Sorry, Your Highness. I tried. It's not your fault, Mega Man. They cheat. Meanwhile, in a sunken chamber beneath the surface of Mount Icarus, King Hippo searches for the first sacred treasure. Ugh, flying rats! <laughs> Back at the towering Mount Icarus, the Video Olympics Coliseum arrives at the location of the next event. And now, Princess Lana and King Hippo will compete in the waterfall high dive. <laughs> Get off of me! What took you so long? Yes, Mother Brain. <laughs> One down, two to go. I'm a little nervous about diving down these floating waterfalls. Speaking of waterfalls, there's something familiar about the places these games are being held. Dives will be judged on a combination of their grace and difficulty. Uh, not to mention steering clear of the flying sharks. Flying sharks? You never said anything about flying sharks. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to worry you. Nice dive, Duke. Hey! Whoa, no fair. Dogs don't count. Yeah, but hippos do, huh? That's enough. We'll settle this with a dive. Lover before beauty. Hmm. Get a low score if he doesn't put some more fight into it. Quick, get me the second sacred treasure. Uh, yes, your wrinkledness. Never say the word wrinkles around me. These are beauty lines. 
Now get going! King Hippo got an awfully high score. Don't worry, Princess. You can beat him. As the final event approaches, the score is tied. The fate of Videoland will be decided by the outcome of the 10-kilometer rocket chariot race. Maybe she's after a special warp zone. Uh, could be a secret password. Ah, this is driving me crazy. I'm certain I've played something like this before, but I can't remember what. Forget about that. Just remember, we've got to win, or those creeps are going to be living in our palace. after the three sacred treasures uh, you're too right uh, captain in uh, but unfortunately you're also too late my power is unstoppable now behold the warp zone to obsidian has mother brain really conquered video land <laughs> Will Captain N and the others survive the deadly warp zone? Find out in the next chilling adventure of Captain N, the Game Master.
Listen in. The Game Master. Never-ending battle against the evil Decepticons. The Autobots create a new breed of robot, Dinobots. Yikes! This could be the end! Are you talking about Slash? The Twisted Mutant Turtle from Dimension X? Latest member of the Evil Foot Clan? Or Triceraton? Shredder's Mutant Enforcer? Oh, well, uh, no. Well, surely you don't mean Mondo Gecko, the skateboarding good guy lizard or fugitoid, your whacked-out robotic buddy with the short circuits? So, what's the problem? They left the anchovies off my ice cream pizza! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles From Playmates! This is the Triforce of Wisdom, Link. The evil wizard Ganon has the Triforce of Power. Whoever gets both Triforces will rule this land forever. You must help me, Link. Hey, for you, Zelda, anything. Another beautiful day in the magical kingdom of Hyrule. Boring place. I used to roam the world, fighting monsters and sleeping in mud. A hero's life. Now look at me. Living in a castle, sleeping in a bed. Aren't I sweet? Yeah! I'd like to know one good reason why I even stay here. Oh. Okay, so there's one good reason. Looking good, princess, especially from this angle. Oh. I told you, you should have put on a robe. Hmm. Oops. Guess I offended her royal prissiness. Uh, huh? Yeah, moblins. Hold it while I get the triforce. I'm ticklish! Uh. Hey, you wanna dance? Just ask! Ha! Customers are getting impatient. Guys, it's been a blast, but you're going home. And tell Ganon that if he really wants this Triforce, he'll have to get it himself. Okay, that's better. That's how I like to start a morning. And a magic bow as a souvenir. Aha! Huh. 
Hein It's me, Zelda. Oh yeah. I almost forgot. After saving the Triforce from evil, the hero gets his reward. Ow! Don't you ever whistle at me again. I may never whistle again, period. Don't you ever clean in here? Excuse me, princess. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have asked the Moblins to sweep up before I zapped them. There were Moblins in here? When? About 10 seconds ago. About, uh, 15 of them, armed to the teeth. Naturally, I fought them off, risking my life to save the Triforce and your kingdom. But I don't expect any reward. No, sir. Just a smack in the face is enough for me. Oh, Link, I'm sorry. But you made me mad. No kidding. Anyway, this is the third attack by Ganon this month. We'll have to be on our guard. We, princess? Well, by we, of course I mean you. Stay here today and guard the Triforce. Ah, oh, princess, it's too nice a day. Don't argue. The Triforce must be guarded. And I'm already late to judge the magician's contest. But... I knew I could count on you, Link. Bye. to enter this contest. Are you an amateur magician, then? I am. Fine. Wait your turn. <laughs> Quickly, fly to the tower and tell me if anyone guards the Triforce of Wisdom. My best spell, your highness. It uh, removes the stinkiness from my dirty socks. Hmm. You're a girl, Sprite. How can I get Zelda to pay more attention to me? Who cares? She's a snot. You should stick with me. Sprite, you're only three inches high. What? You don't like short girls? Oh, how cute. 
is guarded by Link. Really? Well, let's get him out of there, shall we? saving your life. Why? You're supposed to be guarding the Triforce. Well, excuse me, princess. I... Ah! The Triforce of Wisdom! Mine! At last! No! No! You can't! Go away, you pesky insect! You choose, but evil doers always lose. Silence! Move it, you boneheads! Get us out of here! Ganon's got the Triforce of Wisdom! And he's getting away! We'll never catch him now! Yes, we will! Quick! Your growing spell! Crazy! Ah, but 
I am the Triforce. You have lost. I rule is mine. Not yet, Ganon. Ta-da! The Triforce. Saved the kingdom again, princess. Not bad, eh? You got lucky. Now get this belt off. No. What do you want? A kiss. Come on. No. Then we stay like this. Oh, all right. I suppose you do deserve some reward. Just don't try to make a habit of this. Oh, I won't. I promise. Sprite, I was that close. <laughs> Just wait till I get out of here, Zelda and Link. You'll pay for this! Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. Come on now, just like that. How's it going? Yeah, nice boobs, honey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Get out of here, dammit! I want to see the chick! I'm, like, busy. Go away. Uh, no! Ow! Uh, cut it out, butthole! Die. Shut up, butthead. I'm probably gonna make out with her first before we, uh, you know, get down. You dumbass, it won't work that way. Don't you know anything about making love? This ought to do the trick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beavis, you're about to be injured. <laughs> He's fallen and he can't get it up. Nomi! Mm -hmm. 
乾いてはこれ以上歩けまいてもっと飲め世が始まった半年余りの日々に比べたら蚊の針にも劣るこそがよいことやな。はせぬお主は大事な人質だ。何タハミーネ王妃と馬車を用意しろとなホンドラグラスめ王妃タハミーネを返せとな、えー、神から地上の支配権を授かったのはヨだ国王に眠り薬の用意を。国宝一騎打ちなるぞ手出しはならぬ、うん、<笑>嘆かわしい貴様の兄王の姿を見ておけな、な、何をするか<笑>分かっておるのだとそなたらが<笑>よよりギスカールを重んじておる。にふさわしき支配者が大軍を率いて姿を奪い返しにするのだ兄弟首を揃えて城内にさらしてやるそれは堂々とお主らグスタニア軍を打ち滅ぼしてからのことだ忘れるな初夏の光は気化した水晶のように地上に降り注ぐ風は透明な猟気の粒を人々の肌に吹きつけてくる寛大な自然に罪はなく愚かしい人間どもにあった
おとなしく降伏し城を明け渡せばよし逆らえば全軍をこざって攻撃するラミあっ往復が嫌なら場外に出て戦い出ぬとあらば近くの村人を皆殺しにするぞジュラーンのイルテリシュやらよく分かった分かったとも話して分かる相手ではないことがなエスタニアの万族に都を奪われカエルにあてなきパルスのこじごとき八代目がおとなしく剣を捨てそこに這いつくばるがよい家なき小路はトラーンに連れ帰り檻に入れて勝ってやろう伝説も神器も知らぬ敵に降伏する気はない<笑>これはもう殿下のお気の済むようにしていただくほかはないダ,ダリウン分かっている聞く時期は謝らんそれにもう一つ頼みたいことがある山猿のような身のこなしロット族の身のこなしと言ってほしいわねあの時私は理性を失っていたトゥラーン軍は追い払うことができたけれど時として計算ではなくて感情を満足させねばならないこともありますそうご自分ばかりを責めなさるな目の前で罪なき者が殺されて黙って見ていられる大大使などではあられぬゆえ我々一同殿下をお慕い申し上げておりますアルスラー様一大事にあれをご覧くださいまし。キーブキーブ戻ってきてくれたのか殿下にはぜひともお伝えしたい旅の土産話などたっぷりとご用意してあります戦乱を避けて登場するとは相変わらず心がけが良いことじゃのお主ゾット族の者だというなら先の族長の息子でメルレインという若いやつを知っているのではないかえなんで兄貴の名前を知ってるんだどこかで会ったのかいほう兄弟かそういえば面影が似ているどどこで会ったんだいメルレインは愛しい妹を探していたぞ族長の座をお主のために開けてあるそうだ族長嫌だよ私族長なんかより別のものになると決めてんだナルサス本当に例の計画を遂行するつもりか本気でなければわざわざ敵の武将を生け捕りにしたりするのかトゥラーンの民に未来永劫鬼のごとき作謀家として記憶されようないやいや俺は悪魔にはまだ足らんよ
誰だ通せ俺の顔を忘れたかおおジムサ将軍よくぞ生きて戻ってまいったぞジムサペシャワール城内のパルス軍は来たる新月の夜を期して城外にいる10万の味方どもと合流しようとしております何パルス軍にはまだそれだけの新たな兵力がおったかさようでございますこれまで王太子に加担することをためらっていた南部地方の諸侯怒号どもがついに意を決し国境に結集その怒号どもはなぜこれまで王太子に加担するのをためらっておったのだ奴隷制度を廃止人身売買を禁じあのアルスラン王子はパルスの社会制度を変えようとしているからでござるそれは現に奴隷を所有している者たちにとって不利になることばかりゆえに国土を回復してもいずれ奴隷を解放させられるのでは大損だからな国王も行方不明ゆえに王太子に味方した諸侯には奴隷の所有を認めると伝えた様子にございますあの年齢で諸侯を怒号を操るとは大きい器の持ち主と見てよいかいやお言葉ながらそれは買いかぶりというものでございましょうアルスラーンなる少年見るからに打弱無能で側近どもに意のままに操られている様子到底一国を統治する器とも思えませぬイルテリシュ殿下うんでかしたぞジムさお主が命がけで知らせてくれねば我が軍は危うく挟み撃ちにあって苦境に陥るところであった。もつかみ放題もらったしあの城を落としたら上司の夢もそう遠くはないな<音楽>いかがなさいますここで一気に進撃してアルス軍と合流なされますか資料の浅いことを言うな異国人である我々があまり出しゃばった真似をしてはパルス人の誇りが傷つこうぞジムサばかりに金貨を取られてなるものか手柄は早いもん勝ちだ。わけまいは少なくなるが、力を合わせようぜ。我らは略奪した物品を利用してパルス軍を装い、接近を図るんだ。人が暗闇に見る恐怖とは、自らを裏側より覗いた姿。まさに合わせ鏡のごとし。パルス兵士が予定より早く川を渡ったとな新月より早くこの地に着くとは聞いておらんぞ新王の到着を待ってはミスミス手柄を逃すようなもの敵敵が我らに気づいたぞ憎かしいぞもとも静まれ赤星赤軍のふりをして悪辣な悪そう騙されるなやめろ戦うのをやめろどうしゅうちだ<笑>アルス人の策略と罠にはまったのだ<笑>言うことはそれだけか裏切り者めが裏切り者の事務所を殺せ<笑>ああああああああああああああああああああああああああそしてひとたび血が流れれば人を酔わせるトゥラーンの民たちよ何時らの祖国へ帰るがいい
<笑>お主の安否を気遣うのは友として当然のことだ。お気遣い召されな。まあ、心配する必要もなかったな。お主の忠実な部下たちは勇者揃いゆえ、下手に俺が手を出して勝利を盗むようなことになっても不本意。と
一つだけお願いがございます何か申してみよう出立の前に一目母上に会わせてはいただけませんか王妃は連日の疲労と辛労で床についておるそれを無理に起こして対話を強いるより直命に従って甲を立て凱旋する方がはるかにこの道にかなうであろう。心配をかけるな。天空に太陽は二つなく地上にシャオはただ一人か見舞いに来てやったぞ具合はどうだ出ていけそうもいかんのだ今夜は雲隠れしたい事情があったな武勇はダリューン教やキシワード教の足元にも及ばず、知略はナルサス教に頼りきり、一体あのアルスラーンに何の取り柄があるというのだ。どう見ても人よしの打弱者に過ぎぬ。サクシ殿が言っていたな、大きな船が自由に動き回るには広い海が必要だ。アルスラン殿下はまだ湖だが、海になれる可能性が大きい。まあ、もっとも海を見たことのない草原の民には通じぬ例えではあったか北欧の語りより先代の女神官の霊に祟られるのが私には恐ろしい花のないところは俺にとってふさわしくない場所。やれやれせっかく落ち着いたと思ったがやはり俺もパルスも安定にはほど遠いかまあいい出ていくのはいつでもできるからなキシワード一人に苦労させるのも気の毒だいずれ同じ場所にたどり着くとしても道は何本もあって良いはずさ目になっても無益でございます殿下我ら天下のお叱りも国王陛下のお怒りも覚悟の上どうぞお供させていただきたく存じます誰がお主たちを咎めたりするものかそれこそ天罰が下されよう Because.
イランの港にたどり着く頃はさぞ暑い季節が我々にその炎のような熱は半分は自然からもう半分が人々の心よりこの地上にもたらされることじゃろうほほう。スーツを使うわよ。なってまだ生きてる天正三年武田家当主武田勝頼は織田信長との全面対決の道を選びつつあった日陰が丸を追うようになって二年の月日が流れていた日陰はひたすら西へと向かっていたが丸尾の行方は用として知れなかった
われらが仲間を次々に殺した人間というのはしたいことがある魔郎という人間の行方だ人間だと<笑>我が名は魔獣海の巫女海の支配者だそして陸には陸の支配者がいるこの二つが交わった時この世の全ての妖魔が復活しよう分かっているはずだマロウという名の人間の正体がうるさい you <laughs> 
知らず巫女さん魔獣女が日陰にやられたようだこれで海の者たちはよみがえりの時が遅れることになろう呪わしきは日陰とかいう忍びの者よ巫女さん陸に住まう水の者を代表しキャッチを打つことをお許しくださいよかろう日陰を殺せ俺は今より東に戻るこの戦国の世を焼酎にする者は三河の財の者と出てならば三河の地に地獄を招くほうそれは楽しいやいてんじゃねえよしょうがねえな女は女じゃねえよ忍びだよああ風見か私、あやって言うんだ私、宿を頼んでくるあやもし、もしはいあの、旅のものですが一夜の宿をお願いできないかとあれ赤ちゃんかわいいのよこの子を抱いてみたいグルミ死んだらしい亡者の行列だこの世に未練を残した亡者<笑>戦で滅んだなら村は焼かれるどうやら妖魔にやられたらしいな
探してるって言ってたよねそのマロってあんたの何さ俺を殺そうとしたやつその人を追って殺すのが切られている愛しい方に切られたのよ私を切った自分を切った男になぜ未練があるのさああの人のそばにずっといたい。
まさか多分あの人の魂があの蛇の肉体に入り込んだ魂だけになっても妖魔に乗り移ってでも<音声>そんなに自分を愛した男に会いたいのかな私、ここら一帯から妖魔の気配が消えているまるで根こそぎ移動したみたいだ織田様の軍勢みたいに東に攻め入ったのかもね織田行く先々の国を滅ぼし血をすするという織田か。尾張大名織田信長は天下一統を目指しこの頃三河の地に遠征していた長篠城救援がその目的であるあれもまた妖魔かもな<笑>久しいな日陰。話ってなんだ、うん、<笑>おのが命もらわねばならぬ我らが武田勝頼様はな信長との戦の勝利のために妖魔の力を借りると言われたのだ俺にその任が命ぜられ菊賀の巫女に会いに行ったのだやはり菊賀の巫女は魔老だったぞだから魔老は武田に力を貸す代わりに一つの条件を出した俺を殺せって武田のためだ死ねえ聞かねえ<笑>
この年三河長篠において行われた合戦で武田勝頼の軍勢は織田信長に完敗を喫したこれにより名門武田滅亡は時期を早めたお前らの死がお前らの血が遠さん涙が怒りが絶望がそれらが我らに力を与える源なのだ<笑>武田勝頼我ら妖魔がおのがごとき小心者に本気で加担すると思うか長篠に行くんだろう。マロウが俺を待っている。待っている。ああ、待っている。もういいよ、マロウなんてどうでもいいじゃん。どうしても行くって言うんだったら、私を切れ。私を切れ日陰が死んじゃったら私行かないで日陰お願い来たぞーマロマロお前が菊賀の巫女なんだ<笑>マロウが巫女なのではない菊賀の巫女がマロウという赤子の形をとってこの世に生まれ出ただけよ菊賀<笑>俺に聞きたいことがあったのではなかったか<笑><笑>その傷そうその傷よなぜ俺が毒手裏剣を投げたかそれを聞きたかったのであろう日陰よ人間はつまらんな特に忍びは戦えと言われたら戦い死ねと言われたら死ぬ一生定めに縛られてつまらぬ人生よこれはな魔老という殻を破り菊賀の巫女としてよみがえることで
そんな煩わしい人間というものを超えたのだ人間を超えたそのために旅先で愛した女も殺したお前だけは殺したくなかったのだ日陰だから手裏剣がそれたお前にも人を超えてほしいのだやはりお前は俺を本気ではああ殺せなかった日陰我々の世界へ来いそうかそうか日陰お前の血を飲み込みこの世を俺の手で掴んでやる<笑><笑>人の世を塗り替えるのだ所詮弱き人間は龍馬となって人を超えるよりないのだ<笑>どうだ日陰自分の弱さを思い知りそして人間を超えてみろ俺は自分の信じた道を生きる。そうすることでサラメダと超えてやる捕作だ、うん、定めを超えるだと<笑>お前が定めを超えられるほどのものかよく知るがいい、うんうんひ
陰マロウ俺を運んでくれたのかあやあやこんなに泣いてしょうがねえな女は。あんたに私の命をあげるだから今度は人として生きておくれ今度生まれ変わる時は人として生まれるように私の命をあげるよ。あれ赤ん坊がかわいそうに子供を産んで力尽きたんだわ。人間はつまらぬよな日陰
This poor body, even the chill of the water is beyond it. Or the burning heat of a flame. <laughs> Can't be helped though, right? I guess it's to be expected when your body's no longer of this world. You're right. We did what we had to. Choices were made. Besides, the body's not important. What counts is the soul. The soul and the will to fight. <laughs> right, Mother? I see. So this is a hell. This is what they use then to destroy their enemies. Ah, it's coming back to me. How could I have forgotten? Yes, this feeling, this urge, this will to kill. There is no need for masks here. The naked face of aggression. The raw demand that is life. All of it is truth. All of it absolute. You too have the dark within you. Why must you try so hard to hide it? That shining on your face, that's what they call tears, isn't it? I have my own memory of these tears. The feeling of them on one's face, but that was a long, long time ago. Tears, of course, weren't the only thing I cast away in choosing this path. Come, won't you? Savor the fear. Expose your inner self. Throw it all away. There. You can see it now, can't you? Your true form. Welcome to the world of the dark. Accept from me, if you will. The kiss of death. It's as though the light's trying to focus itself. And that will be where our enemy is. The enemy we must defeat if we are to avenge our mother. Uh -huh. You know, I think we're the only ones going to the light. Hey sis, look! Well, what do you know? He's leaving too. 
If you think about it, he has no choice. Born between the light and the dark, a damp fear such as he cannot hope to exist among the humans. He would provoke only scorn, that and their anger. Finding purpose in the destruction of the dark, despite his own heritage, isn't that what he said? But sis, I don't get it. Where's it all lead to? What's at the end of the hatred? Loneliness, perhaps? Fortunately, ma'am, I was able to secure an entire ship for your use. Now we may leave at our leisure in perfect safety. The children do so hate the crowds. It's only for their sake. Thank you. Ooh, I'm gonna get you! No Thank head, you no head! head. Mother, please. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Young man, throw that filthy thing away immediately. Okay. Fine. Nasty, awful thing. Be gone! Oh, what? What is it? Oh. A dark one, I tell you, she's a dark stalker. He seems a quiet enough man. However, he has an anger, a hatred against his own blood that knows no end. He hides that anger inside, deep where no one can see. Can anyone claim to understand him? Probably not. Not even himself, perhaps. <laughs> He'll continue it, you know, this lonely one-man fight. Self against self. But, sis, huh? to be lonely means to be alone, right? How can we say he's by himself? He's got Anita to stay with him, doesn't he? Even better, Anita's got Donovan. It's too much for anyone, being alone. True. Oh, I'd almost forgotten what the light looks like. Yeah, but don't forget what causes it, though. It's kind of a too high price for a pretty landscape, if you ask me. You're right. What could I have been thinking? Hey, it's okay. Look. Huh? Think about it for a sec. The same light that kills also grows flowers. Hmm, guess that's what you'd call an ironic situation, huh, sis?
We've been chasing after the source of that light for I don't know how long. Seems like forever. Two centuries now, maybe. And then, before we knew it... Just me, or does that comet seem to be looking at us? Be quiet, Zienko. Okay. Master at Arms, the sorcerer from the Shao tribe, has arrived. Thank you for coming. The city outside the gates, how was it? The road that brought us here was quiet, empty, untraveled, deserted. As for the citizens in question, they were, I believe, devoured by the dark. I sought with utmost care, but no signs of life were detected. I see. The other two, who are they? Sorcerer disciples of the Shao tribe, my lord. Mei Ling and Sienko, my lord. Hey, can I ask something? Is it true the Emperor's in residence? Sienko, you mustn't speak so lightly of the Emperor. That we've been honored by admittance into the palace is more than enough. It's quite all right. There's no one here to offend. The Lord has already left the palace. The only ones who yet remain are the very strongest of his armies. Wait a minute, I don't understand. I thought we were summoned here to protect the Emperor from harm. It seems we're the decoy. The strangeness began with the arrival of this comet, here. The comet, it seems, is affected with evil energies. Each of the stars that's been in its path seems to have lost its light in the sky. The cosmic balance has been upset. Naturally, we're seeing its repercussions here on Earth. The air grows foul, the soul has no peace, the light loses its holy power, and the dark infests the land. It seems the comet's light has had an unwelcome effect upon the darkness. It becomes more violent and threatens to cover the land with its evil power. Recently, the darkness has even begun to move against the Emperor himself. It's closing in on the palace. Our plan is to let it, encourage it to come here, so that it might be vanquished all at once. They've got nothing to worry about now that Mother's here. What a waste of time for the Emperor to run away, huh? Huh? Why are you looking so... I have the most awful feeling that they want more than we can give. What? Our expectations for your magical powers are indeed quite high. Tell me, is it true that they surpass even that of the darkness? Yes, or so I believe. One spell in particular should be able to help. If that doesn't work, I'm afraid we've no other hope. Very well. If you can manage to end the dark power, you may be certain that I will speak for you personally when it comes to electing future royal sorcerers. Master at Arms, sorcery is but a small feat done by mere mortals. None of us has the power to end the darkness completely. Additionally, the spells used to combat the darkness are as dangerous to the wielder as they are to the victim. For this reason, those of our caste have deemed them strictly forbidden. The casting of such a spell would surely endanger her life. But we've no choice. Even now, the enemy surrounds the palace. There's no time left. Our hope was to have saved the spell as our last resort. 
to throw one's life away as a mere diversionary tactic cannot and must not be permitted. Thank you, Elder. Your concern is appreciated. However, I knew the risks when I accepted this duty. But Mother! But that would mean you came knowing all along you were going to die? Forgive me. If I weren't so old, I might have been strong enough to... to... Uh, I'm sorry. Mother dies the chosen follower of the tribal sorcerer. It is not the path she would choose for her daughters, whom she would have lead a simple life. Mother! Mother, no! no! Cursed Igu Tenshin. A spell most wretched. In using it to banish the darkness, she has doomed her own soul to eternal suffering. A cruel end to a noble deed. <laughs> Mother, you told us once that sorcery could be used to protect happiness. Mother, forgive us, but we cannot obey your last wish. You are too dear to us. We must save you from your own sacrifice. Sacrifice, fate, and duty. Simple, right? For these abstract concepts, our mother gave up her life. The last spell mother showed us, the Igyo Tenshin, it uses as its energy source the exact same power as the darkness. We cast that spell, and have been looking for our enemy. <laughs> looking for a long time we will do it you know we will we'll free mother's soul from the darkness and we won't let it beat us we won't Well? So, you found it. That's the demon world. Well, we haven't existed for millennia for nothing, I guess. You're right. Let's pay a visit to the upstart. Our common demon world interests do unite us, after all.
Perhaps I can forget my boredom for a while. Displeasing light. Lord Dimitri. Hmm? Even now, the five sun-like objects converge upon the castle, scorching the land within their path. It would seem someone takes great pains in their effort to destroy me. The Dark's dislike of the light is well known. I cannot help but see it as a taunt. I will not be driven from my castle. I will not run or hide! How admirable. I too hate to hide. Lady Morrigan Ainslard! Indeed. Clan Ainslard, my ancestral enemy. I should have seen it from the first when I saw you in battle. Well then, milady, to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? It intrigued me, this controversy surrounding you. I did some checking. Wouldn't you like to hear what I've discovered? Look, my lord, a mention of those same robots you encountered in this record of the human civilization. Huitzel. That would seem to be the name given them by ancient man. In the age of ancient civilizations, during another time when feuding groups fought each other for power, many such groups seem to have disappeared completely from the pages of history. When a civilization reaches the apex of its growth, the Huitzel appear. They're triggered as though they're time bombs. My lord, look! A clear indication of one such civilization! It was the Huitzel! The Huitzel destroyed their civilization! The harbinger of civilization's end, and they were the robots I encountered? Congratulations! It would seem that you've been elected the greatest threat this society has to offer. <laughs> I've no wish to become involved in the petty affairs of human world history. Am I not the greatest power yet seen by the demon world? <laughs> Careful not to underestimate us, my lord. If you do, it may be that it is your name which disappears from the history books. Go tell your demon world fools that although they may have exiled me, I am far from defeated. Tell them that the return of Dmitri Maximov has been but delayed. Tell them also that their agony shall be so much the greater for the wait. <laughs> So it shall be done, O oh future Demon World King. Good luck. Lord Dimitri, why do you delay your Demon World attack? This business with the robots concerns the greatest king of the human world. It has absolutely nothing to do with you, my lord. It is because there is one who would oppose me. Only through his destruction at my hand shall he be taught the folly of his ways. Hate the dark. Despise the dark. stained with filth. For that reason alone, we must live. If those such as we no longer exist, how else can this world know of their need for us? Ah, oh, jeez. Why is it so empty? 
The shows are completely deserted. What am I gonna do? I guess people aren't in the mood for musicals right now. Especially during wartime. Still, what's with the stupid headline, Are the Darkstalkers Involved? <laughs> if they are involved, I sure can't smell them. It's probably just some loser human trying to cause trouble. Just leave my show out of it, is that too much to ask? Someday, I'll repay them for their trouble! Aha! I may get my chance sooner than I thought. down too easy. aren't you? Weak ones like you should know their place and stay out of trouble. Weak, huh? Gee, thanks a lot. Is that any way to talk to a lady in distress? Oh, great. Now they've seen me. The humans are gonna blame me for this. You just watch. Just cause I'm a dark stalker. Talk about unfair. Why do they have to hate me so much? Existence with humans is impossible. That is why we are called Dark Stalkers. To live and thrive, we of the Dark must be strong indeed. Uh, what? Oh. All right. See you then. Don't forget now. Take care. Hello. You're awake. Such a quick recovery. No human could be up so soon. You really shouldn't have helped me, you know. Don't you know how much trouble you could get in? Perhaps you don't know us as well as you think. You're a familiar face in this part of the country. Anyone who's seen your show knows there's nothing to fear. Look, see what they've brought you? The local kids have been by pretty regularly. So pretty. Will they come again, do you think? I'd like to thank them for the flowers. Unfortunately, I hear that most of the people in the town are headed out on the trains. Today, if I'm not mistaken, they all seem convinced that the big bad dark ones are coming to destroy them. I ask you, what's wrong with people these days? They're not dark stalkers, you know. The ones attacking? Seems to me they're attacking the town itself. They kept saying exterminate. Exterminate? What an awful thing to hear. 
You should leave too, Doc. They're gonna rip this place apart. And how am I supposed to do that, young lady? The healthy ones will be able to flee, but as always, the weak will be left behind to die, and I, for one, won't abandon them. How can I, if I'm to go on calling myself a doctor? For you and your patience, then, I hope the city won't be destroyed. For a Darkstalker, you're a remarkable girl. Did you know that? Hey, I'm pretty special, if I say so myself. I can't move forward. There's something on the track coming straight for us. What the hell is that? Citizens, as of this moment, this railroad is under our jurisdiction. We hereby commandeer the use of it to combat the oncoming Darkstalker threat to this town. Sure, buddy, but how are we supposed to get out of town? You are going to let us leave, aren't you? Leave? But why would you want to do that when we've come so far to protect you? There's no reason to flee. This train you see is, in reality, a mobile cannon. Your safety is assured. Still, we must insist that you surrender the use of the railroad. The better to protect you with. So that's how they're putting it, eh? Figures. They weren't here when the town was attacked before. That's why they could say those things. With all that ammo in town, we're worse off with them here than without them. Doctor! Doctor! The cat lady! She's not there anymore! Does that mean she's better? Of course not. She's still recovering. She's a dark stalker, not some kind of superhero. The least I can do is pull a passenger car or two. The more people who get out of town, the better. Huh? What... what's that? There's bound to be more casualties in town. You'll have to come with me. This is appalling. Who is responsible for this? We've captured a Darkstalker spy in town. No doubt it's responsible for these crimes somehow. You can't be serious. A spy? Well? How's it doing? Has it talked yet? No, sir. Not yet. Because of it, civilian casualties have been extreme and morale has been ruined. Ask it again. What are you talking about? I'm not the one who fired on the town, you are! <laughs> Silence! The spy will speak only when spoken to. Continue the questioning! Yes, sir! Wonderful. So much for a fair trial. Uh, huh? Doctor. That's why I love humans. Just when you think you've figured them out, they do something to surprise you. Exterminate all human life forms. Exterminate all dark stalker life forms. All civilizations infesting the Earth, annihilate, annihilate, such is our appointed duty. We are the Guardians of the Earth.
Agnes. Doctor, you've got to get out of here. You're going to be killed. What, and leave you here to die? Not my style. <sighs> we must hurry. They haven't made it to the fields yet. Let's try that way. This way. No, wait, wrong way! Thanks, Doc. You've given me new faith in humankind. Good. They're following you. There you go, boys. Come on and step right up. I see you're drawing off the path. You again! Well? What do you plan to do with it? I haven't thought that far ahead, actually. Could it have something to do with the ammo in the back, thinning the herd, so to speak? Something like that. Don't tell me it's a martyr routine. If I have to? Make it to the tunnel, and your sacrifice will be uh, redundant. The tunnel? They say any fight you can walk away from. You saved me. Thank you. Tell me, how does a dark stalker come to care for human lives? There are those willing to understand us. If you give them the chance, it's only a matter of time. You know, they're coming to understand us. Is that so? Mm-hmm. I know it's true. We live in the same world, don't we? We have no other choice but to get along. It seems there's plenty of ships for the evacuation. Safe journey, both of you. Hey, I'll see you later! Hey, Anita! Even if they do save the soul of their mother, they'll only be condemning their own two souls to suffer the eternal darkness in her stead. Still, that belief they have that they'll somehow manage to do it it must be the source of their strength. They're not strong. Not even a little bit. They're just nice. Nice, and that's all. Their strength is a lie. Mm -hmm. They're just gonna go die. Anita, listen! You cast away emotion to protect yourself. Perhaps it was appropriate for you to do so. Once you showed me your anger, now your sadness. Anita, tell me, are you ready? Perhaps I may help you remember what it is to feel happiness.
This world is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law. Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. And in spite of it all, why does Griffith value you so much? There's no reason in particular. Do you really need one? Will you always be left doubting me when I lay down my life for you? Show you another way. So put your glasses 
All right, stretch out the rest of those ropes. Any sign of the enemy? Nothing at all, sir. <laughs> even if hundreds or even thousands of enemies attempt to attack, the elite of the Blue Whale Heavy Assault Knights are gathered here. No one can set one foot in a stronghold under our guard. <laughs> Listen, you must always be on your guard in war. Do not cease to be vigilant! Uh, yes, sir. The commander looks unusually alert tonight. Yeah, it's because he's been given such an important job. I guess he can't help but be more focused. Is it from God? It is. It's the signal to move on to the next phase. Very well. Let's move!
<laughs> They've finally shown their faces. Aye, sir! Now then, fire the cannons into the center of their formation! Sir, it is impossible to reach them at this distance! Then send out the whole unit and tear those rotten kids apart! Sir! Hold on a minute. So, this is their trap. They must realize how difficult it would be to destroy this stronghold. So they're plotting to lead us out into a battle on the field. <laughs> how foolish they are! Such cheap tricks are of no use against the most resourceful commander of the Tudor army. Then, what should we do, sir? We ignore them. What? Let them buzz around all they like. It's time. Let's get moving. Ripley! I have confirmation that all the raiders have crossed the river. Well done. Everyone get out of sight quickly. They seem to have stopped their charge. It's not worth risking their lives to attack this impregnable stronghold. Message! Open the gate! What happened? The General will be visiting this castle about an important operation! Really? I need to speak to your commander immediately! Right away, sir! Should we send the signal now? Not yet. We've got to secure a way in for them first. It's an enemy raid! Bring all the bridge guards back into the castle! Griffith! We shall wait for the signal. Uh, is he going to keep us waiting out here all night? No wonder he puts so much faith in Guts. What's going on? Why is the gate open? Do it now! Sir! What was that? Griffith? Everyone, rush to the front of the castle! This is it! Oh, <laughs> 
succeed with such a small number? I, Suradan, shall put an end to their lives personally! Marching in from both sides like that! That's our commander. You had a raft prepared just in case. I am always prepared. It is a commander's responsibility. Commander! Huh? Please, don't leave us here! Save us! This is outrageous of you! This raft is a precious heirloom that has been handed down to the Corbowitz family! Remove your armor, you can all swim, Vermin! You did very well today. I was just following your orders. We did it! Finally. We've driven a wedge into Tudor's territory. We've opened the pass leading to Doldry. My, my, that was a long walk. First I'll feed my stomach with a sumptuous meal, and then I'll have a well-deserved rest. <laughs> Your Grace, and General Buscon, what a pleasure. What happened to the Black Fortress? Well, our enemy was so devious that even I was inferior in terms of underhanded trickery. Sir. So, did you just roll over and surrender the fortress? No, sir. I, I deliberately withdrew and let them occupy the fort temporarily to give us ample time to... Grimbusson! Is your minuscule brain even capable of recognizing the importance of that fortress? I thought I was doing the proper thing. I'm warning you, this is the last time I'll support you. But, General Buscon, I... A warrior is nothing without honor. Now go back and reclaim it. Sir. This time, I shall definitely put an end to them with the secret tactics that have been passed down to the Korbowitz family for 500 years! 500? Not quarreling with some evil design, not straying from virtue, sacrifice thyself ceaselessly. Render your services to our fight for peace and security. Before God and country, the title of Count is bestowed upon thee. Place thy flesh and heart in heaven. 
Separate thyself from falsehood and desirous ambition. Uphold the law and the spirit that it serves. Know the subjects, for they are your charge. And in service to them, be valiant and with due majesty advance the war. Stand prepared for thy foe with due thirst for battle, and fear not, despite the machinations of thy enemy who march upon thee. Thou art the duly appointed count of our glorious kingdom of Midland. So, now he's a count. Have you heard? Sir Griffith was awarded the title of Count! Oh yes, I heard that too! He's so handsome. I'm just jealous because he is so attractive and even more graceful than any of the women at court. Not only that, he is the greatest swordsman in the kingdom and commands the strongest army. He has far more class than those awkward nobles, and he has so much presence and elegance. Those nobles have absolutely no idea how to treat a lady. Compared to Sir Griffith, those ministers in the court are all so rough and rude. Those poor old ministers just can't hold a candle to Sir Griffith. <laughs> That's enough! How dare you speak of such things! We're Please, sorry! Forgive, forgive us, Your Excellency! <gasps> Gossiping hens. General Urius, what is the use of yelling at them? Your voice might echo throughout the court. You look very displeased for some reason. I wonder what's troubling you today. It's none of your concern. Oh, yes. How could I have forgotten? By the way, did your grace happen to hear about the king's change of escort for the upcoming fall hunt? Huh? There's nothing to hear. My unit, the White Dragon Knights, are regularly assigned to the task. What is your point? Uh, well, Your Grace, the Hawks were requested to be the escort by Imperial Decree. Uh, what? It is reliable information. <coughs> Nonsense! The Fall Hunt is an important event. It allows the King to promote friendly relations between feudal lords. Our best knights, the White Dragons, are the only ones suitable to serve the King in that honorable assignment. How could these newcomer thieves take that from us? Ugh! Uh. What could His Majesty possibly be thinking? Will you allow this affair to take place? What? The White Dragons were reputed to be the strongest unit in the kingdom. Nevertheless, its glory turns to insignificance due to the emergence of the Hawks. What? You... How can you say... As I say, it is a rumor within the court. <sighs> It is an undisputed fact that the Hawks are invincible, as they have yet to be defeated on the battlefield, and there is no sign that the tide of war will subside any time soon. In feudal times, a great leader on the battlefield may usurp power in the court. Additionally, His Majesty highly appreciates that boy, although I do not know why. If things go badly, that boy might become a general. Ridiculous! I would never permit it. It is unheard of, some mercenary becoming a general. No, never a general. I will not live to see it. It shall never come to pass. That cretin of common blood is not my equal. Well, I just mentioned the possibility. If things continue as Never! I absolutely will not allow it. In the act of hunting... A little danger must always lie. Hmm? You never know what kind of beasts lie within the woods. What are you trying to say to me? Of course, not only are the beasts dangerous, but also the stray arrows that may have been launched at the beast. A stray arrow? And a nastily poisoned stray arrow at that, Urius. Huh? If... You're suggesting... A stray arrow, your grace. Mm. <laughs> a stray arrow. How interesting. <laughs> it would be a proper death for a man of common birth. <laughs>
looking back, the morning comes to find your face in your grass. Take the moonlight, but it takes to any side you're shedding. What is there? It's just the same. What is trying your crown? I'm spending my grass, walking back so where my grass is fading. Nothing is more profound or everlasting than envy and enmity. Man lives on in the deep darkness of such feelings while he strives against his sinful fate. In this world, is having affection towards someone an avoidable sin? Nice boobs, honey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! <coughs> Get out of here, damn it! I want to see the chick! <coughs> I'm like busy. <coughs> Go away. <coughs> uh, no! Ow! Uh, cut it out, butthole! Die. Shut up, butthead. I'm probably gonna make out with her first before we, uh, you know, get down. You dumbass, it won't work that way. Don't you know anything about making love? This ought to do the trick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beavis, you're about to be injured. <laughs> He's fallen and he can't get it up. 